your ball in the trees and then you live out the park. But if you've got a little time, then come and spend it with us. Cause now you're listening to the rough cut. Hello, 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 and welcome down to yet another episode of the Rough Cut Golf Podcast. And boy, oh boy, have we got quite the episode here for you. Just as a warning before you really invest your ears in our voices. This episode does include spoilers of an in-depth nature on the new series of Full Swing, which is out now on Netflix. Other providers are available of video entertainment, but not when they cover the PJ Tour in an in-depth behind-the-scenes <laughs> no, no, way. Not. Um, I'm joined, of course, by Mick, by Kieran, and by Jacob, as we do our full review of Full Swing Season 2. As mentioned, we are going to be talking through the episodes individually, what you can expect. Um, it will include some spoilers, but nothing which is going to um, taint your kind of enjoyment of the series. So don't need to worry about that. I'm pretty sure that all the episodes are going to be coming out at the same time. I think so, yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. I don't it know. Seems to be the modern way now. Well, uh, I don't know. Some yeah, other streaming everywhere. providers do annoyingly bring out an episode um, like every week. Ted Lasso did that, didn't they? Yeah, oh. so like if uh, as soon as something becomes popular, like whoever they it start is... start to hold it back. Start to hold it back. And they, it's so yeah. frustrating. What did they... With the first season of Ted Lasso, do, did you watch it as it came out? Um, I was, I think... Two se- three seasons in. I just wonder if that was like, a, oh, we drop everything at once everything and at once, now yeah. we've got it big yeah, time. Then. Exactly. I watched it before it came out. <clears throat> you watched it before it came out? Ted Lasso. Which is very interesting because exactly what we've done with Full Swing. How exactly. Did, yeah, how did you watch it before it came out? Who's it made by? Oh, no a way. Hell. That's sick. You know, during the summer before it came out, I was working in the content department, so like doing... Like, uh, production marketing for the releases of things on the app store and stuff and apple tv was one of the things that's we very cool nice cool Which so you had like an embargo sort of very same thing. very yeah. similar to this this is why it's also why this is coming out a day earlier than it normally did you does. have to yeah. sign an nda on that or was that just a oh god probably <laughs> can't so i mean i didn't do any of those <laughs> well, things now you're all right <laughs> yeah, it's out now yeah, yeah. you're okay. Okay. okay oh by the way they don't make it to the premier league <laughs> Please watch Ted Lasso. It's, it's literally the best. I've still, still not watched it. <laughs> Sorry to so start this on a damp uh, squid. How would you anyway. still work here? I don't know. Because yeah. this anyway. is golf and we had uh, to talk about golf. <laughs> so as uh, mentioned within that melee, I'm not sure whose words uh, these came out of whose mouth, whatever. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. full swing season two. We've given been given early access to watch all the episodes um, to give you guys an indication of what it might be like. The actual release date, I want to say, is on August. Wednesday. This is coming out on the yeah. Monday. The sick. The sick. As 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 known as March sick. <laughs> um, so you say we all got early access to it. Who actually? Who here, <laughs> who here did their email early enough to get early access to it? Uh, oh, uh, did you get your access today? Yeah, I got, I got my, my access, access today. Yeah. You got your access today? I imagine again? I got. I haven't checked the emails, but I imagine <laughs> I have got <laughs> access today. Literally <laughs> pointless giving her an email. Silly. Unbelievable. <laughs> Um, so we kind of watched it all through. At, at this moment in time, we are in, you know, reality, not in Manchester. Like we are recording this a week before we leave because we are currently in, right now, within this space time in Myrtle Beach. Um, so we, uh, I think the actual qualifying events today. So there's a qualifying event to get into a PGA Tour event, which I'm playing in today. So you might not actually be able to tell by my voice, but I'm actually crapping my pants. You're doing really well at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I was say, I'm, I'm a little six under <laughs> <laughs> through eight holes. That's you know what? Amazing. That hole out on the second, third, fourth, and fifth, amazing. Hey, fantastic. One of them was for a bogey, then. <laughs> <laughs> from 200 yards. You I'm haven't seen need- on most consistent golf in the world. <laughs> you haven't needed to putt yet, so that's just great news. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm on the par. Although the greens here in Myrtle Beach <laughs> are fantastic. So we, are, we don't know how I would have got on, and no one's going to know how have gone on to like April when I think the like embargo of the event well, is gone. You will know, but <laughs> yeah, we'll tell you on no, Discord. No. When we actually leave the the course, they've got uh, Will Smith there with his like denuralizing oh, thing right. from many and black, just, just ah, like yeah. God, such a good reference. <laughs> just shoot you back reference. Reference. God, that's yeah, yeah. So or, good. or Tommy Lee Jones, I like them both as much. Will used it more, I think. I think oh. he was pretty trigger happy with that, wasn't <laughs> yeah. he? Yeah. Except in the second one where he didn't use it on the girl, didn't he? He did, because he, he kind of fancied it, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. You uh, know when you win that fish at the fair and you you flush it down the toilet? This is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> if you do get hold of a denuralizer, by the way, use it wisely. Yes. Okay. Who would you use it on? 
Who would I use it on? Uh, you can be really selective, though, can't you? Because mm-hmm. it's not like when you press it, it's not like it just wipes. You've got to like say what you what forgot. you want them to. Okay, so I mean, you, I, you can set the time, can't you, of how much they're going to forget? And then right. if you wear, anyone wears the glasses, they're protected. I'd right. probably do it so I could be very selective that I hadn't read any of the Harry Potter books, and then oh, I could have like you do it yourself. a fantastic oh. few weeks. Oh, do it so you just don't like. Turn it around. <laughs> Selfie mode. But, yeah. Just yeah, like just like the little things like I've never had a cheese and ham toasty. But can you oh, imagine the first time you have monsieur. it? Can oh. you do it so that you take a individual memory out? No. It's just back to a time, isn't it? Back to right so now. So where would you have it? to go back to for you not to have read oh Harry Potter? That's, you a, long, that's a long, long that's time. That's a long time. That's a long time. That's YouTube out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, way too far back. We're, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're back wait, on the uh, job search. Wait, wait, I've, I've, got, wait I've got a YouTube channel? It's got six years I actually prefer having a more selective way of kind of deleting these memories. So I'm going to stick with that. To be fair, I... Stop for spoil my fantasy. I can I can see a time where Pete would want to go back to not reading Harry Potter. He's flashed himself and then 15 years into the future we've got to go find him at a post office and <laughs> yeah. and he goes bring him back and single twist twine ladies and gentlemen this is an example of go home and try it again. <laughs> Wow. I did, I did not know you were that much of a man in black geek. I've, got, I've like? got two kids who are So like when he walk, walks into the back and all the aliens yeah. are working, there's like, what is he doing? Boom! Like, Boom! 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. I like the guy smoking yeah, the cigarette. Yeah. You're not <laughs> smoking here. <laughs> <laughs> throwing, the, throwing the letters out of the machine. <laughs> and he just pops them back in after the yeah. Got about I mean, nine arms. I mean, I have absolutely no idea how we got here. Um, we do a great job of starting a podcast about watching something else <laughs> and talking about yeah. a completely different show. So that's, this that's is actually real. the embargo for Men in Black Two is way past. Yeah, not what, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what everyone, that's not that's not what everyone remembers though. Ah, very yeah. good. Uh, so yeah, now we are in the future. I'm currently six on the through eight holes at the Myrtle Beach uh, qualifier, uh, but I'm going to take a short break uh, from burning up the front line <laughs> of this peak die design to sit down, talk through full swing season two now let me put this in context if you haven't watched the first season this was a i think i'm fair in saying fairly groundbreaking as far as golf is concerned yeah 100 percent. so groundbreaking series where the netflix cameras are allowed behind the scenes um really in-depth views uh of the professional golfers that we don't usually get to see you know we only really see them on camera hitting a golf ball fist bumping every now and again and celebrating winning millions and millions of dollars. We don't actually get to see behind the scenes and what makes them tick, Mm. which is one of the big problems that many people have with pro golf. Season one was the first attempt at that, following on uh, from series like Drive to Survive, uh, Breakpoint. Breakpoint, There's there's been a few of these styles of um, seasons on different sports. The first season went down pretty well. Yeah. I think yeah. I think universally a lot of people did enjoy it um, and had that look behind the curtain. There was obviously a lot of drama going on with Liv coming on the scene, who's going, who's not, all the different players they got to interview. And also the, the plays that they selected to follow throughout that year absolutely smashed it. Like yeah. weirdly, mm. they followed people who had really interesting years, oh. mm. which is, I don't know if they had, if they had had, hindsight and gone back and selected players i don't even know if they would have selected anyone different because it was very it, very good it was a yeah. big thing of like you know with that with the drive survive like every time they were you know in a garage of of something like it was always they would win it or it'd yeah. be an amazing story like it's just so like netflix lucky sort of thing yeah, yeah, so yeah. um i i i'm scripted or scripted scripted or great editors Mm. True. Yeah, it makes you give you that feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made. Uh, we can obviously go through and talk about, it, but I did make notes of like a general perception was that they didn't quite get as lucky this year. Right. Was just, there was a couple yeah. of moments where I thought, okay, it's happened again. Yeah. Um. And I think that I think the point you make there about the editing and how they've done it, I think they do a good job of perceiving that that is how it's played out. Yeah, Rory, yeah. could you just do two or three reactions for us? Imagine you won the Masters. Yeah. Right. Can we have another one where you narrowly miss out? Oh, can we have another one where you don't make the cut? <laughs> I think I think a good example would probably be Wyndham Clark. When yeah. we get when we we'll see we'll yeah. get on to talk a little bit more in depth. But I would have been surprised if they hand picked him at the start of the year as a guy to yeah. follow. Mm, interesting. They would have he I feel like he won and then they went and did his bits. Could but have been. Is it, 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 it's a risk in it, because I think um out of all the players that they're gonna follow 
to, to get that many players winning that many events is, is going to be so difficult to kind of repeat and they didn't quite manage it. But I think overall, um, we'll kind of get into it. It's eight episodes. We'll go through each episode individually, what we liked, what we didn't, what you should watch out for, give the titles of the episodes as well. Yeah. And this all builds up to the Ryder Cup, which was obviously the end of uh, 2023. Oh, yeah. And that was... Yeah. Very good. Yeah. That was very, very good. Awkward for the Americans, but oh, slightly. Yeah. So the first episode is called The Game Has Changed, but it's a part one. Part one of two. Part one of two. So we are kicking off this new season on Absolute Fuego. And it basically focuses on this weird moment in time where the PJ Tour has been consistently running a <laughs> smear campaign has consistently <laughs> been running a campaign of basically discreditation against live like really rallying and galvanizing their players to stay loyal don't go to live we're going to make it worth your while you've got no moral ambiguity about staying on the pj tour wear the best don't go to live all the rest of it yada 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 and then all of a sudden the it all flips when it suddenly yeah. comes out that the PJ Tour are potentially signing a merger with the PIF and with Liv. And everybody in this episode, as everyone was at the time, is kind of like WTF is mm. happening here. The main focus of it is Rory. Yeah. Which is yeah. quite rightly, in my opinion. Mm. So Rory, for literally a year, was the spokesman of the PJ Tour, took on a lot of responsibility for trying to promote the PJ Tour, trying to get his fellow professionals to stay. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's I, the only thing I would say is that whether you want to believe it or not, but he kind of states that he didn't really take it on. It was more that it was sort of, and it's very cliche, but like thrust upon him. It wasn't like a, I put my hand up and I'm going to... Mm. He just felt that there was the need to do it. it yeah. I think it gathered its own momentum, didn't it? Yes. And, and all of a sudden, he had the wind at his back. Yeah. Um, everyone was cheering him on. Yeah. yeah. You know, fight the good yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. And then... Everyone's eyes turned to him to go yeah. like, how do we react to this, Rory? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it definitely felt like, as he was out in front of everyone, as everyone was pushing him forward and cheering him on, Jay Monaghan came up behind him with a big pickaxe. And buried it firmly in between his shoulder blades. <laughs> It'd be like if, if you know, they're they're at the black gates and Aragorn's done that great speech. He's about to turn around and say for Frodo, and just as he said it, Gandalf stabs <laughs> him in the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Arras. Off. <laughs> sorry, Aragorn. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. He's promised me the ring. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the Assassin's Creed thing? Oh, we're going to be a in Bachi. That's after you've stabbed him, though. You're going to close his eyes. Oh, God. Yeah. I think the... Because, the, like you say, it's part one, part two. The game has changed. Part one was kind of setting up what I felt was almost like they did a PGA versus Liv and then combine that with a Rory versus Brooks mm. narrative as mm, well. Yeah. Something also that maybe they enticed the answers from Rory about, but, like, obviously he spoke about... Um, Brooks winning his fifth and going past him in the majors list mm. how in his mind someone in his era of golf is now a better major winner yeah, yeah. than him yeah um, and all this stuff as well let's say that was going on with the PGA with the PGA Tour and Liv and how it was all just playing out and I think obviously with some of the guys like the relationship between Rory and Brooks was actually probably better than I thought it would be Mm. Um, they yeah. put a lot of waiting on them playing together in that practice round in the Masters yeah. and saying, you know, this was all this news was coming out. And then, you know, for the first time when everyone's together, first opportunity they get to play golf together, these two go out and play around. Mm. Yeah. Almost as like, a, you know, thing, are things as bad as we thought they were? Yeah. But mm. I think JT, especially, he mentions a few times that, that it was quite chippy, yeah. the relationship between some of the, from these separate tours, yeah. that, that it wasn't all you know, happy families, as we, we kind of knew, but you kind of thought, well, these guys have played together for the last 10 years. Yeah. You know, maybe there isn't, it isn't as bad as we think. But Yeah, I think it was more, it has the feeling that when they come together for the majors, they don't have to, they don't have to necessarily worry about this anymore. Yeah. Like they're all together again. They're all playing the same course. You know, they're talking again as peers rather than kind of people competing on different tours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it just felt a bit more, a bit more normal. I yeah. think everyone else was a lot more surprised about him playing with Brooks than they were. Yeah. If yeah. that makes yeah. sense. I wonder if it's a bit like, you know, when, you know, when, um, 
<coughs> Premier League players go and then play for England and suddenly when you get there you're like oh we don't we don't have to worry about hating each other now because we're on the same team we're here to play this event mm. and do our best and I thought that it was aside from Brooks playing very well at the Masters in episode one I thought it was very weird that they didn't have any John Rahm content in there apart from him holding his part and he didn't, no green jacket ceremony, no, no well done John Rahm. Very, very odd for me. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah, you you would <laughs> imagine that you go with such, with such a character as John Rahm is that you maybe would have even thought before the season came out and before we started to see who was going to be involved, you would have penciled his name down as a guy mm. they would have spoken to, but he's not, well, he's in it, but he's not, doesn't give his opinion on anything. They don't interview him. They don't, like you say, they don't show him winning. Yeah. Mm. Very strange. Um, well, but then it, I suppose yeah. that's kind of... I, I found that a few times with... Um, I think it was the US Open episode a bit further down and they literally didn't mention Rory coming second at all mm. after him being in the earlier episodes. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. They've not sort of intertwined him in, but they maybe went for a slightly different start for this episode. They didn't do like a really highly focused on, you know, these. they jumped around a little bit for the first yeah. 20 minutes and then they settled into it. I mean, the 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 funny the funny thing for me was was like the way they kind of like say they built up that against each other, and you know why they've done it because it's the narrative that we've got going into into the golf season. But they use these two figureheads of both tours and then just clash them together, yeah, and then show that these two guys actually are okay with each other, yeah, like and then no, and then neither of them won, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> that, I mean, that's the we. we you know, we speak about the the Netflix luck of them getting the you know obviously in that occasion it didn't happen, um, but it does it does happen a bit later. How did it feel? <coughs> Excuse me, I get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel uh, seeing Brooks again, Kieran? I oh, know it was it was great. I mean, for me, the episode was like, "Hey, uh, you're right." <laughs> yeah, right. Um, was it okay for you? You. <laughs> <laughs> Now this episode, I was sort of like you know, both my two favourite golfers sort of mm. being the uh, yeah. being the figureheads. the main nice. the main figureheads of it, yeah. and um, you know it just kind of I think what Brooks did of winning the PGA kind of really brought like live into the question of the fact that you know these guys can compete at the majors and they can compete and they are you know just as good as people on the PGA tour. So it really brought that kind of you know the live the live um sort of tour a bit of credibility compared yeah. to what it wasn't really it felt, it felt like it was kind of an announcement of them saying on although we've left to play on this tour which lots of people have said is less competitive mm. we are still challenging like i thought it was quite yeah. cool that uh phil got a little bit of a there was a little tiny bit of phil tiny holding bit, a putt yeah. yeah and it, then uh because you know, he and he finished second he yeah second patrick initial. reed was fourth yeah, yeah. unbelievable yeah. yeah they played they played particularly well for people who you know, had been talked about as being much less competitive yeah. now. It was the fact that they were like saying that, you know, you went to live to sort of, you know, not practice as much, not work as hard. And, mm. you know, it was kind of, you know, Brooks sort of, you know, put that to bed sort of thing. So it, um, it kind of felt like in this episode, Brooks came across as like, he wanted to prove the point that like he was back in the majors. You know, mm. he was still part of that conversation. And like I said, the, the whole narrative of those two, Brooks and Rory, facing off, off against each other and Rory being pretty, I'd say, I'd say quite honest. Like the, the best thing about Rory is that he says some stuff that you might agree with, that you might not agree with, but at least he always says what he's thinking and what he's feeling. Yeah. Mm. Um, even if, you know, sometimes he can change his mind on things and sometimes it can seem a bit... Um, he can like go back on what he's felt for quite some years quite quickly. I don't know yeah. what the right terminology of that is. Flippant. Yeah. It, yeah. It kind of can flip flop every now and again, mm -hmm. but he always says what he's thinking at the time. And yeah. like for him to be very honest and say, you know, Brooks and me are on the same ages. I don't want him to get past me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to stay ahead. I want to win more majors and talking about this spiral of, not being able to get on this momentum and build in the majors. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was quite very interesting. And like I said, very, very honest. And Brooks was just, he was, he was Brooks again. He was Brooks. Yeah. Brooks yeah so, Brooks. so one of them was very honest about needing a reboot, which was Rory. You know, you see him kind of talking to his manager and his caddy afterwards saying like something like, I just don't feel like I used to feel the ball doesn't feel the same coming off the club. The swing doesn't feel the same. Like something like he went and rebooted his game, which was great. 
him being very honest and on the other side is Brooks not sharing what his secret was that yeah, got him yeah. through that tournament yeah. I love the fact that he's still got this like little thing in his brain which suddenly makes him epic at golf again mm. Mm. yeah it's that it's that bit in his brain I think it's the bit that makes him feel empathy I think <laughs> he just got rid of it that's the bit that's not yeah. quite there you know he's like removed it like Dumbledore and <laughs> shucked it into a <laughs> <laughs> you are you are right though that that scene that we saw with um with Rory in the locker room after the PGA champs. Mm. That was that first time we got a little bit of footage that we didn't quite get last year. Yeah, that, was, that was like a real sort of fly on the wall. We're hearing stuff here now that we would never yeah. have got if these cameras weren't which, on. Which is which is the whole point. Of yeah, this. exactly. Yeah, that that, that, that really, was a big tick for me straight yeah, away. It's really yeah. what you want. And it's so interesting it like with with golfers like Rory. Like we're talking about Rory here. He's like, you know, you, with the world golf rankers at the moment, there's a lot of arguments to be made. But you'd probably say that Rory is still potentially the best player in the world, mm -hmm. even if he's not number on his one. Day, yeah. So it's kind of like you've got this player at the top of the game coming off a course, you know, and having like he's had great years, mm -hmm. and he's coming mm. off the course saying, "I need a total reboot, yeah. reboot of my game, need yeah. to start again." Just because he was, he was saying like he, he feels like he can pee, but he feels like he can't beat them by a large margin, yeah. like you can't yeah. get ahead of them. I, I, I have written a few quotes down to things that I saw and I thought were quite interesting. I can't remember exactly what he said at that point, but it was definitely around a case of like, he knows that he can just throw out top tens, that he can he go yeah. past past them yeah. and go, he makes, I think he made a comment specifically, specifically about him like missing left. If I remember rightly, there was something about like before he would not miss left big or something, and no, there was misses left and right. Yeah, some, and something about that. But it was just so interesting to get those like real like snippets of quotes from him specifically in that environment, so raw of the emotion yeah. that he was feeling. So something that came out straight away, and everyone be warned about this when you're watching Netflix Full Swing season two. There's some fruity language going on mm -hmm. this season. Did you notice? There is. It was a bit juicy in places. There, there were F-bombs exploding literally all over the place. Mm -hmm. It was a battlefield out there if you're mm -hmm. not used to salty language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no there was no warning of that. Absolutely. And I not, watched it no. with my six-year-old and he was like, Daddy, what does, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is an effing, effing three ball? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find out about it when you, yeah. when you pick up a golf club. Don't worry. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, it was very fortunate focused on uh, Brooks and Roy then the second um, episode of the game has changed moved on to this um, kind of vibe of Rory really feeling like he was stabbed in the back and yeah. I, I, again I'm paraphrasing here a little bit if you got this quote mm -hmm. that Rory kind of turned around and says nobody really knew what was happening uh, the players weren't consulted mm -hmm. so it was taken out of their hands and bear in yeah. mind that the PJ Tour is notionally a players led tour even though I think this really showed that it, it isn't you yeah. know the, the PJ Tour is it's going to do what it thinks is best for itself yeah. and then want the players to come along and kind of join in. Yeah. That, that, that became mm. a little bit more apparent. And yeah. I think Rory turned around and said, at this point, they can do whatever the ref they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you talk about the selective right. language. I think yeah. they cut to about four or five different people and all of their reactions was like, what the F has just happened, basically. Yeah. And we were the same. I'm, I'm, I was up at Renaissance at the time. And I... And I very rarely, and I don't know if this is something that my phone did. So I very rarely get notifications on my phone. Right. I think I've turned everything off. Yeah, I have them all off. Because you don't want notifications. I've turned everything off. What? And I'm sure I got a message which was like Sky Sports News or BBC News. And it, was it was infiltrated like, through. And it was like, it was always like, Pete. I know you don't want. <laughs> I know you don't want notifications. I know you're busy trying to break the record of record I, breakers. I know you hate this. <laughs> you have to see this. I was doing the. It was the Rays of Sunshine thing. Oh, right. there, there was the, uh, yeah. um, and I was going to say. I was thinking. I was like, I don't remember yeah, that yeah, happening. Yeah. At record breakers. I mean, me and Katrina Matthew was like, have you seen this? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, No. It's, even she was like, This must be a mistake. Yeah. And mm. I was like, I don't think it no, is. I think, I think this is happening. Do you know like, when they accidentally? Put out that warning that were you know they in America oh, did they, they tested the yeah signal. they yeah, tested yeah. the like nuclear signal and didn't tell anyone that it was a test and we were there yeah we were there we, were, we got yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes we were we were sat in the Airbnb weren't yeah. we that was, it was a bit like that and you were like we, we got one that's got to be a fake we got them one here as well for like the UK yeah, yeah. I, missed, I missed mine I didn't get it so oh, maybe right. maybe I need my notifications <laughs> yeah. off yeah, you <laughs> you literally that. turned everything off oh so that was interesting but they yeah it was just a real. I, I don't, 
I actually felt like quite sorry for Rory. Which oh, is yeah, massively, which yeah. is like a weird, a weird thing to do because I think when certain kind of athletes get to a certain stage, you know, obviously incredibly well compensated, you know, out there as one of the best players in the world has been for many, many years. I think what these series do really well is they lift the curtain and actually show that these guys are just like they're just normal people mm -hmm. who are really good at golf. exceptionally <laughs> good at golf, and they're thrown into these wild situations. I would like to say that Dustin Johnson doesn't feel. <laughs> I would like to say that Dustin Johnson doesn't feel normal. No. Can I tell yeah. you that? Can I tell you that the name of his boat is just chilling. Just chilling. Two. Mental. Is that without the G as well? And like <laughs> yeah, an apostrophe. It is. It yeah. is just, his boat is called just, just chilling. chilling. Yeah. It, the the it, live players were very smug when it was all coming out. No, it's, it's not even that. It's so relaxed. Not, some of those letters aren't even there. It's just like <laughs> just. <laughs> um, I did. I did see something quite relevant to us, and I wanted to ask you a, a very important question about it. Um, when Rory drops that f bomb and says well, they can do whatever the F they yeah, want yeah. now. He, I think this is his exact, the exact moment that he's got his um, available and recently listened podcasts in yes. his car. I saw that, yes. the fried, Now yeah. on, uh, on there is No Laying Up, on there is the fried egg. Fried egg I yeah. think also- The some Moana some, soundtrack. Mo Moana soundtrack <laughs> podcast or what, uh, Canto. <laughs> um, should we make it our mission this year to get onto Rory's podcast list? Um. Yeah, I, I imagine that this will just happen as a, you know, just a, it'll just happen naturally. I don't think we need to force our way into Rory's podcast list. I don't want to force anybody to listen to this podcast. No, I don't yeah. want people to listen to this podcast because they, they enjoy it to. because it's El Fuego content. It's the second time I've used that today. <laughs> so I just want to, I want to have to happen naturally. Yeah, when we're sat here in a few years with Rory and we're chatting about everything, yeah, it's going to be great. Don't need to worry about it, mate. Um, now, the uh, the other really funny thing that happened was during the during the uh, champions dinner for the PGA. Mm -hmm. Justin Thomas made Is this one the of the guy. It's the funniest yeah. joke ever. That he's you know he's giving his speech and he's saying that like I'm looking forward to a really good week. I can't wait to get out there and play with you guys again. But he and then he says in reality we shouldn't be here celebrating me as the current champion. We should just be thanking Mito Pereira. He raises a glass as well. <laughs> he raises a glass so and right. cheerses for Mito on the last yeah, of last just year. Just hitting it into the river. Oh, so tight, brutal. <laughs> so and I was, again, brutal. again, you're in a position where he's talking about a guy who is on live as well. Yeah. So you're like looking yeah. at. But yeah. what and Brooks was, just sat there like. No, uh, Brooks did actually. To be fair to it, he laughed like genuinely laughed or did they edit a laugh from maybe earlier in the dinner maybe maybe when, they, when he looked at his bank account by the accident way, the way they edited it for me was like <laughs> brooks laughed and then they cut to phil and i feel was sort of like a <laughs> but not really right. sort of I, I, that, yeah that was that was funny yeah, that was but funny. I, I don't think i think that kind of showed as well I'm, I'm really not sure phil knows how to be in a social situation <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. no. I, like, I don't think he knows how to operate. No. <laughs> like his, his software kind of glitches a little bit. A little bit cyborg, isn't he? Mm, a little bit. I think, I, I don't know. I just, it, I just, he's just a really, I would actually love a full episode on him because I think he's a very weird, interesting guy. Like I'm not talking about liking him or not liking him. I'm just thinking like it would be yeah. interesting to peer inside what is going on in that school. Just see what he does day to day sort of thing. Like, oh, <laughs> like, like wakes up, up day immediately day. Yeah, yeah, puts yeah. on his aviators. Yeah. The thing is, I don't think he wakes up. I think he's just, he boots up. Right. <laughs> and then the smile yeah. comes. Just like, just, and he just, combs he just, back whatever hair he does have left. His eyes don't close at night. Just <laughs> back to Gandalf. Oh my he God, just, we're back to Gandalf. He just basically gets in his status chamber. And then... <laughs> <laughs> He's actually, he's actually 200 years old. Yeah. Really. <laughs> you know that guy who's aging backwards? That's him. He's actually fooled everyone because he, uh, he's actually Bobby Jones. He's just switched hands. He's playing left-handed now. Oh. In an extra 100 years, he'll be back. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. lord. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, no, that's true. And then, they went, and then we got to the US Open. So the second half of the second yes. episode was the US yes. Open. Ricky Fowler had a major part to play, which was great. We got to see the Jailbird putter win the tournament. Um, which was wonderful, and then we got. It's called Wyndham Clark. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. no. Uh, say, it doesn't yeah. matter about who won. The Jailbird Putter was the winner of the tournament, and we all know it. <laughs> yeah, oh, that was the winner of last year. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. And then episode three, we finally get into Wyndham Clark, um, which this was the episode that not only did I make the n most notes on, but it was also the episode that I thought most um, w most applied to Peter Finch. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I also just before that as well, they they. 
go into Ricky Fowler as well a little bit on that second episode. Yeah. That I thought was really, really good. I so. I have to wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah. I, I, I like Ricky. I think he's cool. But I've never, I've never, un, I've never like, I've never really seen an interview with him where he's given anything away. He's always been like quite a cool guy, but never, never found that interesting. Never found that engaging. And this was good because again, it just went behind the scenes, explained mm. a little bit about what he was going through. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was, I thought that was nice. Again, just like that little bit of extra that you don't understand about these guys. And it, it became yeah. a bit of a theme this season where in season one, you had this incredible mixture of players that they'd selected who were just winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were doing great things. They were win apart from Brooks, obviously, who had that little bit of a meltdown. But it was kind of like everyone was just, just on it all the time. Like, I'm the best. I'm great. I'm winning. Major championship, bash, boom. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was compared to Scotty, wasn't it? That uh, Brooks episode as well. So, like, yeah. Scotty was winning everything. Yeah, they were just, like, just firing out majors yeah, left, yeah. right, and center. It, were, it, yeah. it felt like there was 20 majors won that year by <laughs> all, everyone on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then this season felt a bit more like, all right, we're seeing these guys in a bit more of a struggle. Yeah, like, yeah. like, Ricky hadn't won for ages, comes out and obviously does win this year as well. Yeah. Uh, but that that US Open where he was like getting back to his best and then Wyndham kind of comes through it, it. I just felt that, it, again, it was a different side of things that we don't normally see. And then does Ricky win the like week after at the- Yeah, uh, yeah the Rocket Mortgage. Yeah, that's the one. The, yeah. um, sometimes that's a better story though. That's And that's kind of prevalent in episode three of just like how you can be at the bottom in terms of your mental game. And then you know coming up and 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 winning a major championship. Yeah, the way they the way they edited that did give it a feel of like they put all of this emphasis and all of this energy into Ricky winning the U.S. Open, and they were filming it. And then he didn't win, and it was almost then it was like that fade to black, and then boom, two weeks later, and then like headed on. To, yeah. And they yeah. kind of did that quite nicely of like yeah. they almost it was like they weren't going to film anymore, mm. but then in two weeks' time he goes and wins and. The you got a bit of Butch content in this one as well. Yeah, that was cool. I thought love Butch content. Butch was great. Yeah. He he was so good at being like a he was almost like a little bit of a mouthpiece for like the Netflix guys. The way he was like teeing up questions of like, oh, it's the first time that the PGA tour and the Live guys are gonna be together. How are you feeling and all this? He was I thought Butch was very well coached. Brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. And then he we had Butch we, knows what he's doing. We had that little bit as well, um, at the US Open where you had Ricky and Rory talking in the gym after mm. and them and how annoyed mm. they were about the light and how dark it was and Oh, oh my god, I forgot about that bit. Yeah, and they were both quite Anime again, fruity language. Mm. Very yeah, fruity <laughs> language, yeah. Very fruity language. And it just goes to show that across the world, wherever you are, whatever level that you play at, if you're a golfer, everybody moans about the course afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Everyone hates getting held up by the it grip just, in front. It, it doesn't matter. Like whatever it is, if it's the greens, if it's the rough, if there's a bit of <laughs> wetness, if it's this, if it's that, if it's the light. It, Every single golfer, every single level of the game, will moan to each other yeah. about something. You know what? It was too neat and tidy. I've, you know what? There's very few. There's very few places that I've been where I've come off and, you know, as a golfer, I've had a conversation to someone and gone, you know what? That was just great. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> that was absolutely banged on. <laughs> every single thing today was fantastic. <laughs> it was just brilliant. I I I sometimes feel feel like and we talk about this quite regularly. That like the course that you play, your 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 memory of the course is directly linked to how well you played on that day. Sure, yeah. Like, so we played, um, what was that course we got to play in Turkey on the last day of the trip? Oh, God, the name Montgomery, of it. Carrier. Cool. Not a cool no. man. No, no, sumo, sumo, sumo. Su Sueno? Sueno. 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 Right? I remember that course. Yeah, weird one. I remember that he course. He plays up front for someone. <laughs> <laughs> Division two. <laughs> some some number yeah. 10, just behind a striker. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that course as being like tree-lined, piney, gorgeous, beautiful. It wasn't, but I played really well. <laughs> So now that course is my favourite course in Turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reason that Ricky and Rory were pretty much off is because Ricky was very close and Rory was very close. Yeah, again. But well, that was round three. So though. That was the, that was the only thing. That was round three. Yeah. So. They were close again to the... Yeah. Rory. Yeah. Rory, yeah. Uh, could have yeah. been, been the difference. Yeah. This and, is the year. This is the year. And Hopefully. I, God, the, good the, Lord. This is another thing I actually liked about um, episode three, which is called Mind Games. Mm. Because this focused a little bit more on Wyndham Clark. Because mm. I don't know... I didn't know anything about Wyndham Clark mm -hmm. like I, apart from my own swing and the way he goes about things and 
that when he's spoken in public, I always thought he came across as like a bit cocky, a yeah. little bit, you know, not not exactly full of himself, but you know, for a, for a Brit, seeing someone with a lot of self confidence yeah. is exceptionally yeah. weird. Yeah, he knew how yeah. he was. Like you don't like self confidence gets pretty brutally knocked out of every British child in school. <laughs> like this is across the board. You know what I mean? Like we we don't grow up with this kind of self confidence. Mm. It's a bit different, you know, in the US, yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is perfectly acceptable. But it actually became apparent. It, it's not just like him being overconfident and cocky. It's all the the work he's done on the mental side of his game and where he was and where he is now is vastly different. Mm-hmm. And it was really interesting. That. And again, it just made him so much more human, so much more relatable. Yeah, you know? 100%. It was, it, it was, again, like another attempt from, from full swing of how they've done it, where they've sort of incorporated two guys into the same episode, like fan favorite from last year, Joel Damon's back again. And they mirrored quite nicely, I think, the whole, a guy who's been successful in changing his mind game and getting, he, we, they bring in the, the late, I think it was Julie, I think the, late, the name of the lady who was the sports psychologist that came and worked with Wyndham Clark. And then you flip to a guy like Joel, who is really struggling mentally and almost, they talk about how last year's series has kind of affected him in personal life. And even Gino, his caddy, has become more famous. He says, you know, he says, oh, in very typical Peter Finch fashion, but it was like, I don't like saying it, but I'm probably one of the fam- most famous caddies in the world now because everyone knows who I am. Mm. And it, it, I flipped so many times on this episode. I loved it and I hated it. Every, I, I couldn't decide. First, like 15, 20 minutes, I couldn't work out if Joel was making himself more relatable because that was what he did so well last time. Or was he pushing himself away from that kind of thing. And I yeah. was getting irritated. Yeah. But it, it, it kind of almost, um, my, my raw reaction to it was kind of exactly what you experience in the outside world with like people with maybe like mental health issues and things like that. And even from someone myself who's like struggled with it is you have that like immediate reaction of like being annoyed at it. But yeah. then you realize and go, no, 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 that's not the way to look at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And Gino, I think probably is a great example of that. And you get this like build up and, and, eventually you get to the point where you're on that when he got he's on the plane home from is it the us or the pga or wherever it was Mm. and that kind of like build up build up build up of the episode where these two are generally having a real human personal conversation that it feels weird that the next netflix cameras are there yeah Yeah, yeah. literally is the pair of them hugging and crying in each other's arms the the question that got me was he says um he's gone through all this struggle and he's not played well and he's he they know he knows what his problem is is that his kind of attitude to his golf and his life has changed drastically because he's got he's got a kid now and his kind of focus is a little bit off of playing golf well and the question that he asked himself which really got me was am i the hardest working person on my team yeah like if you're not if if pete wasn't the hardest working person here this wouldn't work mm. because the main channel would never exist in the first place swing quest would never exist in the first place Joel Damon had become like a passenger in his own life Mm -hmm. and was just turning up, hitting golf shots, hoping that something magic happened, signing some autographs and going home and looking after his kid, which is, which makes sense. But he has to remember that he has all these other people who rely on him. And I thought it was really interesting how his wife was like, you're not doing enough. Yeah. Mm. You're not working hard enough. Yeah. So buck up your ideas and get on with it because you're affecting all these other people's happiness is being affected by your lack of effort. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was so interesting. It was it was quite a powerful episode at times for sure. And like yeah. I say, she speaks about you know, or there's that bit when the bar and I think uh, um, Joel is speaking to Wyndham's caddy, and he's saying you know like if I don't win, like the house can go, this can yeah. go, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know my life is is set on this. Gino yeah. talks about it. Who by the way is living in a lovely little spot in Very Idaho nice. or in, yeah, yeah. I maybe check out some property prices as well. There. <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, <laughs> it was it was lovely, but yeah, you say you get that. The more that Joel talks about it, and he says that like he feels like a guy who's just turning up and hitting golf balls. I mean, I'm not a swing coach, but the U.S. Open footage they showed of him, his swing looked awful. Yeah, not focused, not it, planned. Because because that's the thing you, you can kind of tell sometimes, and this is why golf is is so hard to play at really any level but certainly when you get to an elite level like those guys are if you're not in the right headspace Mm. like if you're not focused if you're not thinking about things correctly it can just be a spiral like joel damon's like his swing 
his swing isn't any different than last year. Mm. It was just the way he was approaching it and the way that he was kind of focused. And you could see that when he was like spinning out shots and slamming his club. Like he just, mm. he just wasn't there. Like yeah. he didn't want to be there. Even Gino was saying that like in the episode, he says our reaction to bad shots used to be different. Mm -hmm. We'd, yeah. you, you would hit the bad shot. You go, oh, I didn't really do X, Y, and Z there. So we need to be aware of that for next time. This time around, if you hit a bad shot, you throw the club, you swear, you curse the gods and you know, and then we mm -hmm. huff off to the next one. Like your reaction is so important to not only the good ones, like great, what did I do really well there? But also the bad ones are you know, like probably doubly as important. Yeah. It, Cause it's, I think there's a big difference as well between having a struggle which is on your golf and which is purely on the golf course. But it seemed that kind of Joel in this episode, it was a bit more all encompassing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You yeah. know, every time the camera was on him, I, I don't, I, apart from when he was playing, I don't think I saw him without a beer. Yeah. 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 yeah which is a big issue. Which, which he opened up to as well. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And you could kind of tell that, you know, most of the time he just, he was a bit half cut and, you know, he, he was trying to, he was trying to explain to people a little bit about what was going on and you could see he just wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So, for him to kind of like come a little bit full circle at the end was good. And, you know, hopefully he will, you know, he, he was talking about at the end, he will go see yeah. this kind of sports psychologist. Yeah. And I, the, the, the other bit that got me was that they edited it so beautifully where Joel Damon's talking about reaction to implosion. And then we see Wyndham Clark at the U S open getting stuck in those bushes, chipping mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. through the green into the rough chipping on like he doubles or triples the hole or something and it like kind of it kind of starts to burn and this is very technical editing it ken burns in on him and you get his face you see his reaction it cuts to another angle you use more reaction and you can hear him then saying i have to now prepare myself for the moment of implosion mm -hmm. because my mindset is go out there you know play cocky play aggressive but be aware that that moment of implosion is imminent when it comes, don't do it and react in a way that a smart person would react. Yeah. Great, this went wrong. Cool. Let's learn from it and move on. And Joel Damon didn't have that and hopefully will now get that based on him deciding to go for it this, this year round. Yeah. I mean, it, again, it's, it's two guys that have had um, advertised traumas and things that have happened in their life. Mm. They've, they've suffered from loss um, that maybe... Wyndham has done a better job now of dealing with it and potentially where his anger was fueled up from originally um Joel might still be holding on you know I'm not I don't want to speculate on the reasons of why people are how they are but you kind of got that feeling of that there's two guys that have maybe had similar experiences in their lives and one guy has gone a different path and a different way of exploring it and what Wyndham has done has turned him into a guy that was missing cuts every week and then a major winner like yeah. Again, not overnight, but it what the yeah. mental game has done for him, yeah, has made him nothing to a major winner. Because I think I think when he came out on tour, I think everyone was expecting a lot of him because he had a, a very good amateur career, and obviously, he had, on the face of it, has all the kind of talent in the world. But it, like the mental, the mental side of things is so big, is it? crazy, and yeah. it, it really does separate. Um, you know, good players from great players at the time. Yeah. So yeah. It, I think it was really interesting seeing probably a good example that you know, the mental side of golf is something that really isn't looked at enough. And then probably also like the, the whole idea of like well being generally mentally probably isn't mm. quite mm. understood yeah. enough either. Yeah. But you know, that's that's nothing that a Netflix series is gonna <laughs> yeah, solve. Yeah, I, was, I, I was gonna say there's absolutely no there's no illusions that you know, your mental game is almost more important than hitting balls. Mm. Like, uh, I think at it, this level, especially yeah. at this level, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like unbelievable. At, at this level, like if you're a 38 handicap and you can't stop slicing it in the water, get maybe less than <laughs> in practice. It doesn't matter how positive you are. <laughs> I'm positive that this one is going to still slice into the water. Yeah. Yes, it is great. Yeah, you're probably not going to think your way out of this one. You're going to have to make some just, fundamental changes to your swing. Just as a fight, just one final point before we move on to the next one. Did you catch when they're on the plane? There was almost. I don't know if this was a little kind of slip of the tongue or maybe not so slip of the tongue but kind of like little nod to the fact that maybe Gino had an offer to go and caddy for Taylor Gooch did you catch that I did catch that he says something because he's, yeah, uh, he's like why Joel said why did you not I want you to go and get that big deal on live and go caddy for Taylor almost it was like why would he just take his name mm. yeah. uh, again might be just him using a name but it seemed like there might have been a 
potential that Gino could have the gone and carried for the amount of money he could have got. Yeah, and it, mm. to be honest, it wouldn't like it wouldn't surprise me if you think about what Liv have done. Is they offer money to people they find interesting, mm. and obviously Gino, you know, is yeah. an interesting character. character now. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you know what? Do you know what? I literally wrote in my notes: Would Liv be perfect for Joel Damon? He wants to spend more time with his kids. He mm. wants to not practice as much <laughs> and still get paid. Liv might have been well, perfect for him. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, 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 very much so. Um, you didn't like the Tom Kim episode. Yeah, prove it. The episode four. I no. That, that I, was no. what the episode's called. <laughs> prove it. Prove yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, prove yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah, like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> you I ain't mean, got nothing I, on me. Yeah. 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 Where's the evidence? Receipts. Where's <laughs> the receipts? To be, to be fair, I, I do prove it because no, I, I didn't dislike it. I, I, I really liked Tom Kim. Um, he was in my majors picks last year. He did yeah. a very good job for me. Majors picks coming soon. Absolutely. Um, it was a really good opportunity to just kind of see how he is as a guy, what he's like. Um, he is exactly how I'd imagine him to be. Yeah. He's a fun, bubbly mm. 20 to what is he? 20, 21, 22 year old. That's got a lot of character. Um, start the, the episode starts off with him struggling to remember like four lines of, of, a, of a thing. And then getting lost in the Augusta clubhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah that was going quite into, funny, yeah. into the champion's dressing room. Like, He's like, hold on, everyone in here is wearing a green jacket. They should leave. You could, yeah, you, this was fully focused on Tom Kim, kind of really the first time we've had just a one guy focused mm. episode. Mm. And you just, it was just a really good insight into a guy that is very likable, has a lot of, a lot of good golf in him. Hopefully he's going to be very good going forward. Loves chocolate and ice cream. <laughs> and like, <laughs> talks about the monkey brain. Uh, yeah. uh, Steve Peters, the psychologist, if you've not read that book, I highly recommend it. Um, talking about, he's always thinking of like, he, he was like salivating, talking about, I just want to eat chocolate and do this, that and the other. He's basically a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing. He, he, he is kind of still is. Yeah, and that's is. the thing. And you say like walking in to the Champions Club house, I think he parked in a, um, champion space as he, well. He parts in Scotty Scheffler's spot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scheffler shows exactly. up. He's like, "Hey, hey, come over here. It's my parking space." Yeah. It was. It was a. As a, if you're a fan of Tom Kim, I think you'll enjoy it. Mm. I think if you come off the first three episodes, it is a real change of pace. Yeah, especially from the mind game one to happy go go lucky Tom Kim who's just kind of running around the place uh, however it do, he does show some grit because he it does, go, gets yeah. into the open and after round one of the open if you watch the coverage um I mean Peter you were there and you'll be playing in it this year so you'll know this um they <laughs> <laughs> they cover uh Tom Kim basically had a, a level three tear in his ankle mm. after round one which should take you out of a tournament however he showed that kind of I actually in my notes I wrote TK has the dog in him <laughs> because he fights WG. back from D A W G. Yeah, he fights back from like tied ninety seventh or something with an ankle injury that should have him on crutches and eventually does have him on crutches and finishes second. Mm. So yes, he's this fun loving, chocolate eating, getting lost in the Augusta <laughs> Clubhouse yeah, yeah, yeah. young yeah. kid. Yeah. But he's also he's got he's an elite athlete at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. So he's got that in him. I think it was. So I, I would say that the Tom Kim episode, this was a bit more of a, a little bit more of a, a punt on him winning something That's big. Right, say. okay. So I, I think Netflix basically said, right, okay, who who can we get this year? Who's a really good character and who do we think is going to win something massive? Mm. Tom Kim kind of ticks all those boxes. You know, really young, you know, fantastic player, tipped by many to be one of the very best in the world, number one in the world, you know, sooner off than later. Uh, didn't quite, Give it a go. Yeah, yeah. it didn't, it didn't yeah. quite kind of kick off. Certainly, he won um, the Shriners. I think he won mm -hmm. maybe, and they showed that at the end. But they obviously didn't have any cameras there because it was yeah, just like it was purely other footage. PJ's yeah. all footage, and it did feel like a little bit of a filler episode. It felt like it, yeah. They I were think if it would it would be amazing. If he'd have gone on to win the Open, it would have been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. But like the other the other thing which slightly annoyed me about this episode is that Tommy was leading after day one. We didn't get any I Tommy. I want to keep seeing that open leaderboard. We didn't, didn't get, need that to keep we, coming up. To we, didn't, we didn't get any Tommy <laughs> because, as we know, he didn't finish in the manner that we would like him to. And then Brian Harmon does get a bloody mention. Yeah, I mean, I, th but that was like that with the with the Ram one as well. Though. So he, yeah, he but Ram's gone to live. Yeah, but yeah. It, it it was more. It did feel a bit certainly with the open like. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw this out there, and I've, we've obviously only watched this through once. I think in all of the open footage that was on, 
I don't think Brian Harmon's name was mentioned once. No, no. no. Not even in the um, Ryder Cup as well. Not, I, not his, I saw his him name. on screen. You saw him on the screen, but not his <laughs> name. Once. Yeah. He hugged someone at the end. It was it was weird. Like, he didn't hit a... No, he didn't see anything. Didn't yeah. see a swing. Or... Oh my God. I know what happened. He Peter Finched it. He forgot to sign Scott, his email. Sign That's what it is. <laughs> now, yeah. you bring that, did you forget this year? Or was I, there no... I, I, I didn't get asked this year. And I, I was looking for the Netflix cameras. I was, <laughs> determined. <laughs> I was determined to be on it this time. You were telling the open guys, like, can we go film a bit further over this way? Yeah, and just yeah. like, yet again, I missed out again. So I, said, I, w- I watched this episode and I saw a guy who loved to eat. I saw a guy who was like really lovable, really enjoyable, full of energy, d- did some clumsy things. And all I could think of is, this is Kieran Mulhall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! There he is, little Kieran. <laughs> if you were on the, if you were on the PGA tour, would could you not imagine if Kieran was on the PGA tour parking in the wrong space and not only parking, but parking the, the Mitsubishi, mirage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. parking the mirage in the champions. I can right. see it. Be all right there. Be all right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure we're allowed in here. I'll be all right. <laughs> be fine. <laughs> I've spoken I, to him. Sorry. What, what do people normally get here? That's actually a very you thing as well. Doesn't he get the like classic sandwich that everyone gets at Augusta uh-huh. in uh-huh. the club? Uh-huh. Yeah, What's yeah, the one yeah. thing I should get? Yeah. And then yeah. Kieran would eat it, but that was lovely. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. That was, blood, that was lovely. really good, that. Really good. Really appreciate, uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. By the way, if you uh, do get to go to Augusta like I have, <laughs> uh, pimento cheese sandwiches are disgusting. Like they're compl- what? They are honest. I don't I don't get it. It, it. It's kind of one of those things that has become something mm. when it really shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Just cheese? Is it cheese? Comment below. <laughs> what is it? Just cheese and bread? Uh no, because that'd just be a cheese sandwich. Oh, what's, um, p- what's pimento? P- it, pimento is like a mix of different cheeses. And I, I want to say, it's, is it finely chopped onion in there? There's something else think, which yeah. is in there. Something yeah. else in there. It's it becomes like, a bit more of like a spready type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh. like it's a mixture of a lot of things. Mustard. And it's just not... It, it Like, you can eat it. Like, if, yeah. if, you, if you'd crawled out... <laughs> Sedible. If you'd, like, crawled out of the desert after, you know, being lost for a few days. You know, Water. Oh, Here's food. a pimento sandwich. Yeah, you won't go, mm. yeah. you know, you'd, you'd have the pimento <laughs> juice. Okay. Uh, however, the egg salad sandwiches at Augusta, fantastic. Top notch. Okay. We wouldn't know because we've never been. Make note. I will give you a full <laughs> breakdown of everything that I ate at Augusta in a different episode. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, and this, I think this episode, the best example of why this episode was quite slow is that I found it really weird at one point they kind of, you had you got the moment we I remember watching it live of him falling in the mud yeah and yeah. Oh, laughing at that and all that kind of stuff but uh, then they like really weirdly like made it like a this turning point in his it was like now he's got this opportunity is he going to be the guy who falls in the mud or is he going to be the guy and I was like it's not don't think it's quite that deep. will he uh, be known as mud man yeah, but that, <laughs> it did feel like that a little bit it was like they were like posing these questions of like this might influence his career and it's like mm, I don't think he's going to um, every time you look back on your career there are defining <laughs> moments falling into the mud will it define Tom Kim here's the open oh my god he's broken his ankle and yet here he is still competing he's got that dog in <laughs> I remember where we were when uh, Tom Kim fell in the mud. It was you just we were in Dundonald. You just came in from, you'd been out. I think you were with some Dundonald reps and stuff like that. And you came back and you were a bit merry. And you were like, "It's Tom Kim. Yes, in, in, yes. he's in the thing." It's yes, like, you just so come. That you come back from. Um, I don't remember. Don't remember it's not, it's not a good sign. It was when he was at. Royal, you went to Royal True. It was after you played True, and then you had to go out, out and buy the suit and the tie oh, and everything. Oh, that was uh, and it was, was after it? the dinner, and then you'd come back from there. Yeah. Was yeah. Yeah, watches it, it and it was the first thing on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at him, he's so good. And then you get your phone out and you take a video of it and put it over Twitter and stuff. <laughs> yeah. there, there was, it's always a, this is always a bad thing. Like when you go to a dinner, like a nice posh dinner, like you have a few drinks beforehand and all the rest of it. But when you sat down, they, there's always wine. Mm. And you never drink wine beforehand. So then you're forced to mix wine. Oh God, and it's you, always you, a bad tum- you have a tummy cocktail. Yeah, and I was sat next to... Oh God, what's his name? He'll come back to it. Basically, the manager of uh, oh, the, Russ- the Russics Hotel. Oh this is God, what I was trying to remember the other day. Yeah, how we met him? Oh, yeah, okay. Now I'm happy. We, to- we were, yeah, we were, we were having a few drinks together. Okay. Yep. Use that. Yep. Is it um, is net- networking opportunities? Yeah. It, we networked. <laughs> we networked. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> all over that dinner. Good. Wet worked, mate. That's what you did. Um, nice. Episode five mm. focuses on the. Fitzpatrick Brothers. It's mm. called In the Shadows. Mm. Um, this was my least favourite episode, as you'll see, because I made three notes. Alex coming of age, living in the shadow, 
Matt's seventeenth. They're the only things that really? yeah, they're the only things that <laughs> I, like, I like this one. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel that again, like the Tom Kim episode, this felt a little bit more fillery, mm. but I have to say I did actually quite like it. Mm. Uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Maybe maybe I enjoyed it so much that I forgot to write any, <laughs> yeah, yeah, any yeah. notes on it. You're just in. <laughs> You're in it. Oh, yeah. I was so deep Focus in the Fitzpatrick hole. Yeah. I this this resonated with me as a twin brother and having oh. an older brother and playing sport together. I mean, obviously nowhere near the level. Do you want to lie down on that chaise long over there and tell us about it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember when. Yeah. Um, no, it, I mean, we Where's, we where's Julie? Back. Ring her up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to someone. <laughs> they, it, was, it was quite cool to see a guy like Matt Fitzpatrick who you don't, again, get a lot of, kind of in the Ricky vibe if you don't really get that, but giving like pure big brother vibes in that like, you know, helping when he wants to help, but will rip into his younger brother as and when required. The, uh, th- this felt again, like obviously like there's an episode where some of the time you didn't know if they were kind of filming them because they'd done something later on in the year. This felt like a kind of choreographed one. They decided this early, yeah. <coughs> they wanted to do this. And one of the episodes where we speak about that Netflix luck of it did have quite a nice end of the yeah. fact that you went all the way to the open. Mm. And I kind of almost forgot how good an open Alex Fitzpatrick had. Mm. You know, he was yeah. T4, T5 going mm. into the final round. And you did have this kind of battle the whole way, real kind of juxtaposition of Matt playing in the majors and then um, Alex going and playing in some challenge tour event. And it really did build for me into quite a nice. That's why I quite liked it. Mm, it did yeah. feel like it had a good progression to the episode. Yeah, it it, it had a <clears throat> it had like a, a storyline. <laughs> it's all right. It's again. Quite, it's yeah. because Sorry. he qualified for the open. <laughs> <laughs> he qualified for the open, and I'm seeing that your future I was playing. Ju- out. I was just it. I was in floods. I was <laughs> crying my eyes. I watched it, um, and it kind of felt it did have that choreographed this is the story we're going to go for and let's hope something happens. Mm-hmm. But he did have like a really good finish to the year, Alex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I, I just, I, yeah, I just like the episode almost like for what it was. I, I, it was good to finish with all the open stuff, mm-hmm. but I also feel that, I don't know. I, I, I just think it didn't even need that. I just well, once it, again, no mention of Brian Harmon in the open. <laughs> literally zero. <laughs> it's, just, it's literally... He must have forgotten his emails. Like he must have yeah. Kieran that and just not checked it. Yeah. <laughs> I think the producers at Netflix were like, they were probably like cutting all the footage together. They were like, who, who won it? Yeah, I, can't yeah, remember, yeah. I can't remember his name. <laughs> oh, oh, little, I know what it was. Little short fella. What I've, was his name? I've solved it. They didn't actually have enough episode time to get all of his waggles in. <laughs> <laughs> you say, fuck, now nah, I sod it. <laughs> 22 waggles, naff yeah. off. Leave it. <laughs> Oh, that's what they could have called one the episode, The Waggle. Oh, God. The Waggle. Um, now, did Alex Fitzpatrick qualify at West Lanks? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he did, yeah. Okay, so I have spotted a mistake. <gasps> I, I, I know what you're going to say. I have spotted a mistake. Yep. When they started to talk about final qualifying for the Open, they they came up with a thing that said West Lanks mm-hmm. or like Lancashire or whatever it said. And then there was like bang, 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 bang of B-roll. One of the pieces of B-roll was the d- clubhouse at Dundonald. Really? There was, there was, okay, there was I another one. I spot that. There's yeah. another one. So they went bang, 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 bang. They showed us West Lanks. So I was like, oh, cool. We're going to see some cool drone footage of West Lanks. You know, we've played it before lots of times on our channel. Great. looks lovely. Great course. The stuff that they showed was Dundonald. So I was like, uh, y- y- someone, someone didn't label things correctly. Yeah. <laughs> so the one... <laughs> The one I saw was they were talking about him playing the round at West Lanks and they cut in a bit of footage of him walking down a fairway mm. and it was him walking on the fairway at Hoylake. So it was like, you could see the stands in the background. Yeah. Do, you, do you kind of want, I am actually going to cut some slack to the editors at Netflix like they need it. Um, Listen, we're, we're three editors around this table. So they did say like he was quite qualified at West Lanks but right in the middle of that they also slipped in about like open qualifying final qualifying being at different venues yeah mm. so then they started to throw different venues up so I, I'm willing I'm, if you're watching listening to this I'm willing to give them the benefit of that please do not boycott <laughs> full swing season two because of this potential mistake they maybe used one small piece of B-roll that's incorrect whilst, whilst, yeah, yeah. whilst we're ribbing them anyway yeah um after 
was it after the first or second round that Alex had played at the Open? There was a lot of footage that looked like it wasn't graded. Oh my god! It was yeah, like it looked like that, it was yeah. still log footage. I, I literally almost wrote that down as yeah, well. It, and there's one yeah, clip yeah. at the end, which is might actually be the only bit of Brian Harmon that makes it into the entire show, and it's his head <laughs> as he hugs someone. It's the back of his head as he hugs Goals. someone. That's a Ryder Cup. That's not the Ryder Cup. It maybe is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Max Homer. He's, he's, they've got. Uh, they've put the color grade on twice. Oh, okay. Double graded. Really? Yeah. yeah. The, Listen, like, his head's like orange. I, I did notice that as well, but the first season is still the the biggest mistake that they've made. So do, in the PGA Championship footage, mm. they continuously put the sound effect of, of a, a driver, driver being oh, yeah, 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 yeah. when people were hitting the yes. irons. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I went into this with that thought and I, I have a note. <laughs> About the good use of sound effects. I have a note yeah, yeah, yeah. in the final episode where I said that, and we also come, I think it may be the, no, it was the seventh episode. And I made a note saying I wasn't paying attention to it, but when Scotty tees off on the first, first shot on the tee, it all went quiet and it was kind of that cut back shot the right of him cut. hitting the tee. Yeah, iron strike, not a driver strike. Was it? Yeah. Oh, God. Yep. Listen, it's... Hey. Again, let's, let's give it. the free, free benefit with the day, didn't he? No, it was, drive, you, free you with. hear it, it is ball ground. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's, whether if it was three but or not, but it was a, uh, it was iron. Bear in mind, this is Scotty, literally the best ball striker in the world. So with he, a driver? <laughs> no, he, he didn't drive it through. Le- that's the only thing. Left rough. He it, was, it was, was it? I think it was, the sound was iron. I remember, I was there. Oh, did I mention? Oh, we're going to get yeah. to the Ryder Cup. You just hold it up. Um, so after the Fitzpatrick episode, which again, I quite liked, um, episode six was called Pick Six. Now, this was all about effectively Justin Thomas and Keegan Bradley, who were seen, I think, in the media, but also in reality, to be battling it out for mm. the last kind of captain's pick. So you had Keegan Bradley, who himself, I have to say, I think came out of this looking really good. Really I agree. good. Yeah, yeah, I, agree yeah. I really liked it. I I'm, I don't really know much about um, Keegan, but because of the way he approaches his golf with his pre-shot routine and like <laughs> some of the things he does on the course, he it, it kind of comes across as maybe a bit of an oddball. But actually, within these episodes, I thought he was just like a normal, nice dude. Yeah, he's just absolutely cool. Cool family man. Yeah. Seems like he's got his head screwed on. Very aware of how ridiculous the success is of golf and you know he's a normal normal who shouldn't be making millions of pounds playing this odd sport where you knock a little rock around a field and yeah he seemed very very normal <laughs> i think this episode for me was my favorite because it really emphasized how important the Ryder cup is for a lot of people yeah and mm. just you know just seeing justin obviously he having probably the worst year he's ever had on tour and then to make it through into that Ryder cup spot was just I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, got, no, they, got they, a cute dog as well. Well, my first my first note on this episode is Frank JT's dog. Say <laughs> <laughs> that's all I had. I, I, I knew I better make a reference to that because Pete will bring that up. That's when he's like outside on the in the garden. Yeah, it's very at the beginning. Do you know what most unrelatable bit of the entire series? Mm. I am. Oh. Where uh, I'm sorry that I'm sorry the millionaire is whinging about not making it into the Ryder Cup from his dock on his private yacht docking area in Jupiter, Florida. <laughs> Where? Official term. How much of Jupiter did we see? By it's the called way? a jetty. West, West Palm Hello. Beach. I think you're right. I think I could walk through Jupiter in West Palm oh, Beach and know um, where I'm going. We've not, I can't believe it's got to this point if we've not mentioned Jupiter, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like the, I, mean, I think I remember season one being very heavily um, PGA championship. Whereas this Jupiter, one, Florida. whereas yeah. this one's, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it was yeah, like yeah. PGA championship. Jupiter Florida. Yeah, that was like, yeah, those yeah, were the yeah, two yeah. cuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple of Scottsdales. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, seen, Jupiter, yeah, Jupiter Florida got big airtime again. Again, yeah. if you ever want to go, fantastic. It's the Disbury of Full Swing. That's what they say. <laughs> it's the Disbury of Full Swing. Um, but I, I think, again, like Kieran just said there, the, the importance of the Ryder Cup, I think everybody understands that, like, for these guys, it is the pinnacle. But it really did come across that they were desperate to mm, be there. Yeah. Like not not just they wanted to be there and it would be great and you know, they loved the event, that this really is for them like the peak, the pinnacle. We're talking and we're talking about major champions here, both mm. of them, mm. like multiple winners, successful careers uh, compared to mm. most of their peers. And yet 
this is it. This is where they want to be. And I thought that both of them came out really, really well from it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seemed that, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, and obviously we know that uh, Justin Thomas got picked. It felt to me like he was always going to get picked because of the relationship that he had yeah, with Zach that Johnson. Yeah, that was something that was very yeah. apparent as well. Like, he was doing a lot of, like, they were rooming together, going to tournaments, yeah. you know. It was, um, yeah, in that sense, whereas Bradley's very sort of, you know, family man, um, not really within the crowd of well, it. He, he said he he doesn't feel like he's in so with he, that crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so he, yeah, I think, the, I think he says, like, he's not, he knows there's that clique of guys that probably will get picked. And like you say, you... you to me, immediately, I was like watching it and it cuts to a scene and it's whilst all those guys at the open and you've got JT, Spieth and Fowler, all eventual captain's picks, sat din having dinner with Zach yeah, Johnson yeah. also there, chatting about it, all this kind of stuff. They were talking about Matt Fitzpatrick's book. Yeah. yeah. And, was, and, and immediately, I was just thinking, it's like, the mic out of it. that was really good. Whether we kind of already knew this or not, but I was just like, he's just picked his mates here. And I was watching this the whole time. I was watching Keegan Bradley talk about it and I was like, how has this guy not got picked? Yeah, I wrote down. The mentality that he had about it, yeah. what his desire, the, one of the best little, I know it may be a story that people have heard of, but like one of the best little snippets I think we got from the whole thing of him talking about never opening up his suitcase from 2012 oh, yeah. and yeah, how really cool, you know yeah. he was part of that losing point and he just, you know, mentally that's the lowest he's ever been in the game and it's just cut into this soul... Suitcase, suitcase sat there that's <laughs> that not been open for 12 years I, must, I mean i don't want to open it it but must smell it must stink no i i, I said I, I i think the bacteria is going to be in itself by now. <laughs> like, there's, there's no gas left in that like it's just if i found that like i said i i haven't i hadn't actually heard that before. neither had and, i and i'm sure that people will know about it but like he came back from the 2020 uh, 2012 Ryder cup in glen eagles and just left his suitcase unopened since that point. So what's that? Twelve years now. Mm. Yeah, and it's just there in the garage, like ominously never, sat there, never opened. He, he doesn't want to bring up the the memories of what that means. That you know that part of his golfing career. He's just going to open it up and like American tears are going to flow. He doesn't. It, yeah, it's like your email from series one. Yeah, never well, opened. Never opened. Well, no, <laughs> opened and then forgotten. Is yeah. it back up? Forgot about I it. think. Um, I think the only thing that I would say about this episode, and even though I absolutely loved it because it was great to see the aspect of Keegan Bradley and also JT, I would have absolutely loved to have seen from a you know from a Euro European side as well. Uh, you know the sort of like. The choice that um, Luke Donald had with Moronk, uh, Hoygaard, yeah, who else that. was in there? Um, uh, there was another guy sort of in and amongst, you know, who was going to be picked. Yeah, it been, Lowry, yeah, Yannick, yeah, Yannick Paul, people yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah just, yeah, you know, it would have been really cool to see that side of it. Ober. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. who I'm thinking Ober. of. That's who I'm thinking of, Ober. Yeah. Um, it would have been great to have seen that side of it because obviously, you know, this was very much American heavy, but um, obviously, you know. They can't yeah, have we, did, we didn't get any Stenson Gate stuff either. I thought there was yeah. going to be just a tiny Stenson. bit. Wasn't yeah, it? I yeah. thought there was going to be a like a focus on Stenson interviewing him about being Ryder Cup captain and then being like, "Oh, by the way, Luke Donald's taken yeah. over because he's been stripped." I think mm. with um, I think with that, obviously it's it, it's a PGA Tour focused series. Yeah, that's mm. true. So you know, I, I was thinking that obviously from a European standpoint, you're hoping to see a lot more kind of European Th that's stuff. That's probably, that's probably one. But at the same time, like you, you kind of got to understand yeah. because it's PJ Tour, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be focused on that. Um, and then obviously in the kind of, as we go into the Rome episode, it does like focus on Luke a bit more as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I kind of think the the saddest thing for me in this episode and actually really stuck with me is when Keegan Bradley is just one. Um, his event yes. um, at the Travellers. Mm -hmm. And he, he's coming off the green and he whispers to his oh, wife, yeah. do you want to go to Rome? Yeah. How do you feel about going to Rome? Or do you want to go to Rome? Because yeah. obviously in that moment, he's so happy. He feels that he's done enough now to justify yeah. that's, um, that pit. Yeah, because that's an elevated event as well. Like That was a big, yeah. big event. And mm. so. it, it just felt like... Oh, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, no, I completely. He, th agree. he thought he'd done it. He thought he'd done it. He thought he'd done enough. And kind of on paper, you'd say, well, he probably he did. Had yeah. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think Zach Johnson picking his friends cost him the Ryder Cup? Yeah. I mean, because um, JT mm. didn't deserve to go. He had a terrible year. But he did. He did. He, a, did, he did fine. He had a great yeah, he, he, you know, he has the experience. But th even Zach Johnson, pre in the beginning of the next one, I think he says the three things that you need in a Ryder Cup player. Our experience, which of course both him and Keegan Bradley have, JT and Keegan Bradley both have experience. Mm. Then you need team connection, which of course 
Keegan Bradley said, I don't feel like I have a connection to these guys. And then you need form. And JT doesn't have form. Mm. So like it was it was Two out right. three wins. Yeah, exactly. So but look yeah, it was it's very then I guess then you've got the JT's like form at a Ryder Cup and stuff. Yeah. Keegan's never won one. He's not yeah. been on a I winning side. It, it, like, made, it made Zach Johnson very unlikable for me. We, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I kind of felt that Zach Johnson on this point was on a bit of a road to nowhere because he's got a lot of people to pick from. And it's the same with Luke Donald. Like obviously I was really frustrated that Moronk didn't get it. Mm. Mm. You've, that captain has got to pick the people that he thinks are going to do the best. And there's always going to be people who miss out. Mm. There's always going to be people who are disappointed. So on that point, I was like, it did feel a bit chummy. It did feel like he was picking yeah. his mates, but at the same time, would it have made any difference? I was going to say, yeah. so. and when we get into Probably episode, not, when we get into episode seven, which is another of a part one of part two, which oh. is all roads lead to Rome. I think it's really great to see how much Justin Rose wanted to go and, you know, felt like he had done maybe just enough to get the nod. And then this is great scene where they're kind of waiting in the garden, they're drinking pims and waiting to get that call. And you're seeing the calls all get made. And then you're like, oh my God, he's, he's not going to ring him. And then his phone goes off and he's like, oh my God. Like In that moment, it felt to me that getting the call, I don't know, I don't know if this is just an American kind of like unable to show the emotion that they're feeling, but it felt like the European players who got the call, it meant more to them to get a call like that than it did to the American players who maybe felt like they deserved to go. Yeah. Like JT gets the call and he's like, yeah, I'd love to do that. Justin Rose gets the call and he's like, I have been working for this all year. I'm going to do so much for this team. I, like it felt very different yeah. from both sides. I, I kind of think with the, I don't know. I, I think with the American team, I think maybe I, I kind of feel that Thomas maybe thought that he was going to get that pick. Like I, I kind of think that he was pretty confident about that he was going to get it. But I think pretty much every single reaction, I mean, Rose was a great reaction. It was a great part of the episode. But I think pretty much everyone like reacted almost like a little bit of a kid. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, yeah. I love Lowry's reaction yeah. while he's driving. Yeah. He's like, oh. Everyone was a bit like, oh, I'm so excited. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, yeah, it was like the level of, sorry, but just like that line of professionalism of, yes, I will come and represent, but then also the, the kid that's like yeah. screaming out. I think Nikolai was my favorite because yeah. he was a genuine, like he'd forgotten about the professionalism. He was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know how Dr. cool F this is. Yeah, yeah oh, mm. plenty. Plenty of F-bombs. <laughs> um, did anyone see Rose's coffee routine? It's, it's pretty strong. How are you feeling about it? I, I respected it. The milk frothing was good. It was good. I mean, takeaway cup to go to the gym. Very smart. I, yeah, I did. That's what I said to you. I was like, um, that, imagine having a takeaway cup in your house. Like, is a little <laughs> stash <laughs> of takeaway cups. No, yeah, he lives like, in a Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Virginia water. <laughs> yeah, so that's the other place that got a little bit of action was his place. Actually, just bringing back to getting the calls, the call that Ludwig got, he'd obviously got it. After he was he'd won, wearing his, he was wearing he was the, jacket. the jacket. I think she was holding the trophy as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was literally like he'd walked off the green. He had the jacket from winning the European Masters and then got the call. Yeah, it That's was amazing. It always felt like a like he was folding him. He held it at a really weird angle. It was like down at his knees. Yeah, he was like was, looking yeah, down yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because he's six foot eight or yeah, something. Probably, yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of like I almost it, at the time, it, even at the time when he, Luke Donald made that pick, it was still slightly controversial because he'd only played a handful of PJ Tour events. And he'd never, never played in a major before. Obviously an incredible talent. Mm. And then he goes and wins. And at that time, it, during this uh, episode, I was like, well, it was an obvious pick. Obviously it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, don't you? Hindsight, hindsight, yeah. 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 It's like he's walk I feel like he's going to play really well. In the <laughs> yeah, <right it's> like, <laughs> he's, he's walking, he made the right choice. He's yeah. walking off a green with a trophy and a jacket on. He's holding his phone. He's like, yes, Luke, obviously I'm going to Rome. <laughs> yeah, just, before Luke Donald asked him, he was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> fine. Pick me up cool. in Zurich. <laughs> no, it's like, obvious love either. Obvious love. <laughs> obvious. So we, I was like, oh. um, we... We got the Keegan Bradley call oh, of him not mm, getting God, on. God, that was heartbreaking. And, you know, his reaction to it. Oh, and that, that and his kid just wants to... Oh. That's the thing. And that, that like, obviously can't re oh. re relate to it as not being a parent or anything like that. I can just see that reaction of mum and dad know what's happening. Yeah. And it's a real big moment, but they don't want to put it onto the kid. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, what's, go what's, what's going on, mummy and daddy? It's like, oh, it's okay. Just give him a squeeze, give him a hug. And he's like, what's happened? Oh, just daddy needs it. And I was like, oh, this is so sad. Yeah. Yeah. 
Then then what I really wanted off the back of that for our sake is I really wanted to see that Moronk call. I wanted oh. to see oh. yeah. Luke ringing Adrian because we assume he was the thirteenth guy that just yeah. didn't quite make it. Was that just before the BMW? Yeah. Um, was it just before or just after? No, before because they all played at the BMW. Yes, of course they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were up in Dundonald when they... Yeah. And we, weren't we supposed to play with Moronk at one point? We were. Yeah, we, yeah. We, meant, well, we were meant to be playing with him at the BMW. Yeah. That is wild. Honestly, wow. Anyway. But I'd have loved to have seen that call. Oh, How yeah. Luke... So painful. Well, told him the news. I think, why? Yeah. What was the reason? I think this is my, my kind of takeaway <laughs> from the, the last two episodes. So the last two episodes, All Roads Lead to Rome, Part 1, Part 2, which we're just covering the Ryder Cup, like just covering that. I actually felt a little bit like they did a fantastic job of explaining what happened in the Ryder Cup without actually being like in the locker rooms too much. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted a little bit more stuff behind the scenes. Yeah. And the reports were that like um, the Netflix team had kind of been booted out of yeah, the that's US yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was locker room. point. Yeah, I'd got. So that really wasn't mentioned. I think they did a really good job of explaining everything. And I... Again, from a very European standpoint, I kind of felt that... I, I, I believe they did this deliberately. Like, they built up the Ryder Cup and the US team, basically saying, this US team is stacked. Yeah. They're unbelievable. Yeah. You've got 46 major champions yeah. between them. You've got a 3,800 PJ Tour wins. None of these players are outside the top 30. Yeah. On the face of it, this is an annihilation. Yeah, there was like that really great graphic, wasn't there, with like the US players at the top and they were like highlighting flashing major winners and yeah. like flashing them as yeah. they came up and then they put their like European team and they're like, these five people have never played in we've a We've got rugby. rookies here. We've, we've got, got a guy yeah. who's never played in a major. Like we've, there was like it's, three of these players are in the top 10 and the rest of them are unknowns. I and think, you're like, I think, okay, I think, not I think for was, long. I think it was Amanda who like came on and we said, oh yeah, the, this is a group of the dirty dozen of Europe. No one knows <laughs> much about them. No one knows where they came from. Yeah, they've got Ram and Rory, but pff, all the rest of them. I was disappointed that Hovland didn't get more coverage. Yeah. I would, Again, have, liked see, I would, you would have, I would have liked to see him with uh, Alassabal going down the yeah, steps. Would I would have liked to see him cool. posing with the wives afterwards. Yeah. Like I He think. was such a great character at the Ryder Cup. I just don't feel like he got enough You coverage. didn't even see, because they, they focused on that round where we had those hot with that, I think it was that afternoon session where we managed to kind of halve those matches on the final green. Mm. And Hovland obviously broke the back of the, the hole with his putt. To win oh, yeah, that we really... didn't see that. We only saw the rose putt after on yeah. the... I think with them, um, I, I have a theory about Hovland. Didn't answer his emails. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to hear my theory? Not a Go. big email guy. Going to live. So, no, no, no. So I've, I've formed this opinion after being a little bit more close and personal with him at the Open. Okay. So everybody sees Victor as pretty happy, fun-loving kind of guy who's obviously a, a great player. From what I saw at the Open, he's all of those things, but he is focused. He is driven. Didn't you say that like, he was proper grinding at the... On, but he was like, he was proper, like, because obviously there was a lot of requests for media stuff as well. And he was just saying, no, so he, I'm, I'm, I'm here because I'm a professional golfer. I'm going to grind right. my ass off. So wow. I kind of feel that Netflix might have gone to him and he'd just gone, no, don't want yeah, it. Yeah, because he was searching a little bit at the, at the open money. Oh, he, he was, was grafting, yeah. Yeah, he was trying to find something. So, um, but he, he would have been, if you were Netflix and you said, right, okay, who's one of these players who's going to do really well? Oh, top yeah, of he yeah. would have been mm. someone that you wanted to get, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was, again, one of the first things when they first sort of brought that image out where it had all those guys stood and you kind of could see who was going to be in the upcoming, and he wasn't there. It was a, oh, well, that's a shame, but I, yeah. again, that, that makes sense if he's a proper no distractions guy, doesn't want any yeah. any kind of focus on him at all. And I also think that throughout this whole Ryder Cup process, and again, it can be the way that the that Netflix presented it, but I think you saw the Europe had a better plan. They had a better group of guys. They had, there was a real, like such a small insignificant moment, but I made note of it of before they went out to the opening ceremony, all the Americans were kind of stood chatting and the Europeans were stood in a circle kicking a football around. Yeah. It was just little things like that. I was just like, that just presents to me what the difference is. And mm. you know, those kind of things is there's more to it than just being a, great bunch of golfers yeah, and they also took five weeks off didn't they their us team yeah they did like yeah. Zach, whereas luke donald was like you guys need to be playing comps up until a week before yeah. you need to be 
you need to be ready. That's why they all yeah. played at the P, uh, the um, BMW. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so and together. so did Luke Donald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, and they all played together. And yeah. I just lo- I love the overconfidence of it all. Yeah. What I was actually a little bit gutted about um, before w- before we get into the coverage of it, how they didn't show um, the Italian Air Force uh, dropping an absolute <laughs> yeah, killer move it. on Zach Johnson's speech. I must have told you about this. Oh, uh, they did show the planes, but they didn't show the timing of the oh, planes. Oh my god, this it was the funniest thing because it it was like it just all played out in front. So. The uh, I'm not sure of the equivalent, but in the UK you've got the red arrows. So yeah, this yeah. was the Italian Air Force equivalent. Let's call them the green arrows, the blue arrows. <laughs> so they're all red, green, and white. The red, arrows. green, and white arrows. So they're doing all the all the <laughs> anthems and all the rest of it. They time the flyover perfectly. The opening ceremony, whew, whew, uh, Italian flag and sky great. Zach Johnson comes on, starts his speech in kind of faltering Italian. Great. Like our leader, our captain, our legend, Luke Donald, was like basically fluent in Italian. Yes, yeah. but. Yeah. Giorno. Fiorza, yeah. it's Shout out to bad. Duolingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other apps are available. And then Zach Johnson like <laughs> starts are. his starts his speech, steps up to the podium, starts again speaking in Italian. And then all of a sudden, the Italian Air Force come for another flyover <laughs> from the back of the stage forward <laughs> over the crowd lower I'm, I'm, I'm put, I am pretty sure at this point I could have touched the underside of the plane wait that is so smart from Luke Donald to organise that well, the, this, yeah. ev- everyone thought this is planned that's games because they've timed everything so perfectly there's not a chance that the pilots have gone do you fancy another go? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have been able to get clearance for that. Yeah. Listen, so, if they've got Tom Grennan to come up and do two songs timed Tom immediately Grennan. to two minutes, 30 seconds, <laughs> the Air Force can be organized. That was so <laughs> random. <laughs> so they, they fly back over, but you could see like it shocked Zach Johnson and it was one up. Yeah. One up to you. Wow. Because he, he started like trying to do his speech again and I could see the sweat. <laughs> forming on his brow he was like I don't know what, are they going to come back <laughs> and you could, come you could back see like the sweat and he's like he's trying to get his words out he recovers a little bit but I was like you know what they've done him there yeah so not so the sweep on day one started on day zero it's it's everything started beforehand I literally when uh, when they showed the leaderboard after day one I thought to myself no oh, that can't be right we didn't mean all of them did we yeah we literally, mate. We came the, out. It was like they. It's like we had a head start. Yeah. The the, it, I think they did a very good job of like showing it, but it they will never ever be able to explain what the atmosphere was like. Yeah. It just never never felt anything like it. Honestly, it was it was just special, unbelievable. Mm. Never been to an event like it. It was just fantastic. That was that was something I did notice. Like even in the, uh, episode seven and eight, like obviously you had that stuff with Patrick Cantlay and stuff like yeah, that. The hat All drama. That. Like we didn't see the fact that there was, you know, they were oh, all yeah. doing this and thing. I thought it was brilliant. I think it was like you, you, you saw it, but you didn't live it. If that's yeah. kind of the way, like yeah. you, you saw it happening, but because of the way they were shooting the different camera angles and you kind of got the close up and personal stuff, you didn't realize how like the the mass of it of how mm. far it spread and how. Oh. You know, and again, you know, I know there's not fans of Patrick Cantley on this podcast. Me, I've kind of tooted his horn last year. I I came out of it a little bit more like fair play. Like yeah, he, he, he got a lot long. of rubbish and came out the other side of it. I think he um, basically the whole story was that Cantley is pretty vocal about wanting to be paid to play in the Ryder Cup, and if you're going to, if that story is going to be recirculated and come out again in front of about 200,000 <laughs> slightly inebriated <laughs> Europeans yeah. in 30 degree heat, yeah. there's going to be a reaction yeah. because everybody at the Ryder Cup, and again, this is such a contrast to Keegan Bradley, Keegan Bradley would sacrifice an internal organ to be playing in this event. Yeah. Never mind get paid for it. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, his, yeah. when his kid was hugging him, he was like, hmm. Yeah. Do you reckon if I offer Zach Johnson this <laughs> yeah. kid? If I, if I offered up this I human sacrifice, <laughs> would Zach Johnson take it? Like the yeah. Aztec kings of old. Like, yeah. I give you my first child, Zach. Let me play. Get me on the plane. Yeah, whereas Cantley was like, I'm not wearing a hat. Yeah. yeah. It's just, and it, I'm, I must admit, when that story came out, even at the time, you can check my tweets. I didn't, 
it, it basically the story was that he wasn't wearing a hat in a protest um, that they weren't getting paid. And even at the time, it spread so quickly, and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Because mm -hmm. there's people not wearing caps. And it came out like apparently it was too big, and he had a wedding in Rome like on the Monday or yeah, something. The next day, yeah, the next so day he, he didn't want a chaotic tan line, which is absolutely that's fair. fair. And so, yeah, we've seen some fucking raw yeah. tan lines on those <laughs> golfers. Jeez. Well, that's what well, uh, Jay Z on the last day was like, you know, you heard him say to Patrick Canley, oh, I'm not going to wear a cap today because of, because of you, buddy. Because of you, Pat. <laughs> I'm going to back you, Pat. But, um, hey, Pat, you want to get paid to play in the Ryder Cup? Try and win. <laughs> wow. Brutal. Well, that, it was very cool that because the the end of episode seven was like that putt going in, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was I kind of forgot about that a little bit. That was that was pretty pretty I mean, cool because because this was one of the big the big stories of the Ryder Cup when uh, obviously all that all hat gay and like I said it, it turned out not to be really any kind of truth behind it, but it spread throughout the calls. Yeah. Like we everyone was affected by it. everyone knew what was happening yeah and so everyone's taking the caps off everyone's waving them around it, it it's it has to be said it wasn't a bad atmosphere mm. it was kind of like a obviously everyone's supporting europe who was there european wise everyone's taking the hats off everyone's just having a good laugh and even he was having a good laugh yeah. at the time kind of saw that but the way he handled it and came back and the way he kind of secured that kind of point there was that put on 18 wow. i just i have i just couldn't remember that and that was unreal and the problem was the, yeah. he holds that putt, mm. and then Joe LaCarvey's caddy just. Oh yeah, I, you know what? I, I think they showed this really well. It's yeah, the it's best angle yeah. view I think we had. Sound as well was much better than yeah. than we had seen before. Yeah. We got yeah. to hear we got to hear Shane Lowry this shouting thing. and yeah. this Joe LaCarvey talking and all that stuff. We didn't yeah. see that before. This confirmed to me how much of a. Mm, Joe LaCarver was to like, be honest because I was a bit up in the air I was like yeah. he's over celebrated a little bit but like it wasn't necessarily what he was doing he was like staring Rory down and just yeah, like very weird I was just a bit like I, I understand yeah. I get it uh, I, but to, I was kind of on the fence of like oh you know it's the Ryder Cup Every, emotions are going to go slightly over the edge but whatever it might be call it European bias for me I don't know but I watched it and I thought hmm yeah, wasn't that wasn't good? You I heard think, Justin Rose, didn't you? Afterwards yeah. on the green, being he was like, like, "Oh, it's funny." Like he, he was like, "It was funny." Yeah. Like we, we, it was fine. It just went on a little bit too yeah. long. Like that was the only thing. I, I probably saw it maybe a little bit different. Okay. Like, I, the way that he went up, you could just see. It, I mean, from my point of view, watching it, I didn't think it was acceptable. Obviously, he crossed the line, and he rightly got called out for it. It just seemed that he kind of like, he just lost a sense of where he was for a moment mm. and like what he was meant to be doing. There. Yeah. You're a caddy at the end of the day. Yeah, he, he was like so invested with it that he found himself there. He got a bit chirpy with Rory, but because he was in the middle of the green, he was completely like exposed. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, surrounded. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, was, there was like no one else near him. And I think he kind yeah. of, he, he kind of got that. And then he, he kind of like walked off a bit. It was just like a really weird moment that didn't need to happen and as you moved into like the last episode it was clear that Rory used that and the team used that mm. because US did make a comeback to be like you know what they're, they're having it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no I, it was just it to me it was like he did it and I didn't mind it obviously it been building up but then he kind of it was the bit just a little bit like you say maybe just a bit mm. too long and like you say justin rose mentioned it where he was just kind of doing this sort of weird intimidating like it was almost like he was like stood looking at rory and like trying to make himself look a bit big and i don't know to me it, it just again it was going to rub me up the wrong way because it was it, against the team that i'm supporting and also but, and also none of it matters yeah no it, it doesn't because tommy drives the final green ricky fowler which obviously, controversially, we're, we're hindsighting again. Like, gives him it's the nice part. to know that. It doesn't yeah. matter because Ram went on a tear. Fleetwood hit that green yeah. after Ricky went in the water, and none of it matters. Because mm. yeah. we're winners. Like, you know, you guys said about, you know, the, the audio and like the view we got. Yeah. If you're a European fan, you will love Shane Lowry even more yeah. after oh, yeah. watching oh. it. Legend. Because he comes in like the first bodyguard of, I think even in the um, episode seven, they were talking, the American team talks about like, if we had to send in a gladiator, who would it be? And Brooks, they said yeah. Brooks, obviously, like he's the biggest guy. <laughs> yeah. Like Shane was kind of that yeah. for Europe in this. You'd it's send just, him in right pissed up, wouldn't you? And then <laughs> like, a couple you of had, and send him out there. You had Shane run in 
basically having the argument with Joe. Yeah. And then, like, weirdly, like, Rose and Fleetwood is almost like the yeah, second... The Fleetwood, the Fleetwood, Fleetwood one was Fleetwood. Fleetwood was funny. Because he, he was just, not really he, doing it. He just kind of came over and, like, just stood there as, like, again, like, a slightly imposing presence. But you're like, and this, this is fairly Fran, Jesus. Fran, you... Francesco pulls him away, did you see? Dude, like, Fran yeah. comes Dude, in and, you're like, goes... five foot nothing. <laughs> what are you doing here? What, what's he going to do? It, it was quite... In the, the, you going to moisturise his hair? In the scene <laughs> afterwards as well, like, the car park where Rory's kind of having to go at Joe and like Matt Fitzpatrick is so Matt Fitzpatrick yeah, in the yeah. background he's, he's like, just like oh, what's going on? oh my going god on? they're arguing yeah. oh, what's going on? how far did I hit that 7-9 <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just making notes on everything <laughs> at 802 Joe McCarver started doing that was brilliant uh, that uh, that's brilliant <laughs> really... now my uh, only my only contention with the uh, last two episodes obviously it did a great um, job of telling the story of the Ryder Cup and the kind of like semi underdog story of Team Europe against this mm. this dynasty team of US players who are supposed to dominate for the next twenty years. Mm -hmm. My only problem with it was that it was all over very quickly, and you know we had a European celebration, yeah. a bit yes. of spraying, and then the credits went, and I was yeah. like, "Oh it'd my be, god, what?" It'd yeah. be good to see like the. I wanted to see Rob McIntyre take it back to Scotland. Yeah, and the, the whole the whole fan reaction afterwards. I know they showed a little bit of it, but like the the fan reaction in the uh, tented village was off the scale. Mad. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I wanted to see them all go out into Rome. I wanted to see, yeah. you know, Rory yeah. and Ram hugging each other. Like, in fact, there was we, a tiny bit where, yeah. where Rory was like, mate, you make me want to be better. Like, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just wanted to see a bit more yeah. of it. Ad yeah. Admittedly, the, af the after party wasn't great. <laughs> was it not? No. Well, you said, yeah, I remember you saying that yeah. it was pretty it muted. I, I told you I went to this, the after party, right? What, with the players? Yeah. I've told you this. We, maybe Mick wasn't here. What? You, start, you, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. so we we had no we had no intention to go. We weren't invited, obviously. But we were just, it was me, Seb, um, and Rick, a few other people. But we just went out to Rome, had some drinks. Oh, my God. David's not there, is he? Um, no. No, David's with... Uh, the, yeah, yeah. 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 You, went on, you went on scooters, didn't you? All right. <laughs> Jumping ahead of the story. All right. Just tell him. Just tell him. story. No, don't worry. I'll dive into it. I'll tell you what. Tell him if he makes the open later in the year as well. Give it all away. Good Lord. Harry Potter was born and then he killed Voldemort. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. He was not be named. He's not read it yet. Flip it out. Zap me so big Spoilers. Sorry, everybody. Head's gone really bright. Beep. Beep. So, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't no, know. no, no, no. Don't you worry, don't you worry about it. You know it's what? an integral part of the story. Don't you worry you about it. You know what? These are my favourite moments on this podcast <laughs> when that. things go absolutely feral. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, we're in Rome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And no uh, scooters at this point. No scooters at this point. Yeah. We'd been having a, a drink with Mia and Ollie beforehand, and they'd kind of like gone off. And we're like, all right, I'm having a drink. I'm, 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 we're a bit, <laughs> and we get a message from Mia and Ollie, basically in the party, and we're like, "How did you get in?" They said, "Oh, the security guard knew Ollie knew he was messing." Knew Ollie me. Robinson, Ollie Robinson, yeah, England cricketer, spin and bowler, spin bowler, I don't know. Spin <laughs> bowler. <laughs> spin bowler. Quick and has bowled, has bowled see, uh, spin in a test match though. But continue. Who <laughs> 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 cares? And he'd got into the party because uh, the security guard knew him. So we were like, okay, is there a chance that you can get our name on the list? <laughs> just joking. You get the security guard to get his subscriber list up on YouTube. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> has, he got, has he got Rick there? Okay, he's got Rick. He's got Seb on golf. Oh, we're in. <laughs> we're in. I didn't quite happen like that. But he's like, he said, we'll get your name on the list. He said, we'll try and get your name on the list. So we're like, right. Where shall shall we start heading in that direction? The European team hotel is, if if you know Rome, Rome is built on like seven different hills. The European team hotel is on the tallest hill, miles away from where we were. So we're like, how are we going to get there? There's no taxis. Let's jump on a scooter. Hey, scooters! <laughs> so we all jump on these scooters where you can just like get through Uber, or whatever. We all hop on. Uh, Roman traffic is insane most of the time. At night, when everyone's had a few Aperol spritz, it gets a little bit leery, including because we've had a few. So we're weaving around all the big sites in Rome. Don't drink and scooter, everyone. <laughs> we abandon and acquire several more scooters en route because they're running out of battery. We finally get up to this hotel, and we still don't know if we're on the list. 
and everybody's rocking up in Bentleys, in Ferraris, like the team buses. Oh no. We literally skid to a halt on this. <laughs> On these ride on scooters. We're still dressed in our like clothes from the day. So we like just abandoned these scooters. And then like we, we kind of walk in and we say, the, like, where's the party? He said, oh, it's downstairs. All right, okay. So we walk down these like, stairs. We walk through this like effectively what's a big conference hall. Get, go, get, get in order of subscribers. Go, <laughs> go to like the end. And we come out the other side and this is like weird entrance. Like it's like a... I don't know the best way to describe it. It's not like a door. It's like a manufactured gap in a wall. And we go to the card and said, uh, uh, so our names are on the list. It's uh, Peter Finch. It's, I think I said, but I said several golfers. Peter Finch said on golf. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Shields. Said, and, surname on golf. And she's like, she's checking the, she's checking this list. We're not on this list. And I'm like, oh, no, this is so embarrassing. We're not on this list. It's actually Lowry Shane. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, God, so I'm like cringing a little bit. Casey Paul. And then I think it was Ollie, bless him, like from the background, is like called out. He's going, oh, guys, welcome in. Like he's the Lord of the Manor. Mm, oh, welcome that's in. That's just exactly what you need, yeah. isn't it? And I think this is the security guard who like he knew. And she was like, all oh, right. Oh, yeah, come, come on in. So like <sighs> came on in. We got our, got our bands and stuff. And Rick's like Rick. Rick's being a bit weird at this point because I don't think he can he can believe that we're in there. And he's like saying, "This isn't the party. This is we're, we're, this isn't the party. We're the line to us. This mm. isn't the party. Like we're not in." And I'm like saying, "That is Tommy Fleetwood smashing a glass of wine over there." <laughs> and we look around like Tommy's there, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Then we go through, and then it's just like a big like soiree. It's not a party. Mm. Everyone's mingling, everyone's drinking, everyone's being polite. Say a few, say hello to the Hoygaard's dad, yeah. say hello to Nikolai, and it's all really good. And then the most Italian thing happens. Um, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they bring out the food and it's all pizzas. You go first. Next. I think it's fireworks. They set off oh. fireworks way too close to that many valuable golfers. We're literally separated by a pool. <laughs> and they're firing these fireworks out. They're so loud that everybody wants to leave. It's almost like, it's time to go now. We're going to set these fireworks off and deafen everybody. And everyone's like looking up and it goes on for so long. It's like they bought the multi-pack from the Costco. Oh, I love those. And they're just like, pew, pew. It's like sheltering away. And by the time it ends, all the music stops and everyone's just left mingling. And everyone's exhausted. It's kind of like a bit... Right, bad. Yeah, Ram's like, I've played 90 holes. Yeah. I want to go to bed. It's like, what do we do? And then the kind of players are in like a little bit... They're, they're all mingling, but then I see Luke kind of want to go up to say hello. I'm pretty sure he did see me, but it might have been. And he like ran up these stairs <laughs> and these like security guards are in front of these stairs. So I think mm, they've got like a private player's lounge a or private something. Play, yeah. Players function upstairs. And none of that was on the documentary. <laughs> well, by the sounds of it, it was a bit boring. So, <laughs> you know, what was on the documentary though, which they definitely needed to do more of was this thing, this guy. <gasps> Honestly, this might have been the best thing of the Ryder Cup. <laughs> I don't remember that. Obviously, we weren't there, so we wouldn't know what it is. So <laughs> enlighten he, us. He was on the he was on the actual documentary. It just reminded me of it. It's basically a guy who was doing the tannoy announcements, and he was so miffed. <laughs> he did not want to be there, and it was the funniest thing you've ever heard. Because he was like he was like a Brit. and like you could hear him like in the morning. <laughs> in the morning, it was like this. Sigh. This was literally it was like a. Mike, like being, Mike being fiddled. Yeah. Mm, like a little bit yeah, of feedback, yeah. No, yeah. 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 And then he, he was like... It's like... <sighs> <laughs> Spectators are reminded that there is no running in between grandstands. Please don't 
run. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, oh. Aisle it three, Mr. Him. Skinner. Yes, it did. Yeah, he did. Because yeah. it was like when the it was when the doors open on the first yeah, day, yeah, yeah. and I remember it was like the course doesn't open until half six. Yeah. So the remind earliest. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it just every now and again he just he just popped on to say like he just popped on to say something like really inane that everyone. Like, the spectators are reminded the water hazards are not swimming pools. <laughs> If you could refrain from jumping in the water hazards. <laughs> I, I reckon like... Which didn't happen. I reckon like, I reckon like um, British DJ who had been asked to come over and do like, do come and do Ryder Cup radio. Yeah. And he's like, oh my God, yeah, that'd be great. Drop some tracks, hype up the crowd. They're like, mm, well, kind of. But not now, DJ. We're talking like 10, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go on, something, go on, yeah. Yeah. We want wedding DJ. Yeah, we want Radio Fun <laughs> FM. We want that guy. Yeah. And he's got there and they've gone, actually, you know what? We've we've actually scrapped the radio, but you, you can still work at the Ryder Cup. Come and, what do you want me to do? Can you just tell the spectators off for, yeah. for five days? Would oh, that be all right? On, on, the last, on the last night, he was fuming because <laughs> no one would leave, and we so, all like we all started making our own music. Well, the the, the, the closing ceremony, the F one guy Eddie O'Hearn, Eddie O'Hearn, Eddie O'Hearn, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn. No, he's the boxing guy. Um, Jordan, J Eddie Jordan, yeah, yeah. Eddie Jordan. Mm, yeah. So <laughs> we we get into the we get into the closing ceremony, and Eddie Jordan is like, is he drumming or playing? He's playing drums or playing guitar on the stage with like the closing band. Yeah. <laughs> For no reason. We don't know why he's... No one knows why he's there. He wadded up, fam. I don't think yeah, he was, was meant the, to be there. <laughs> I think the he just got up and joined in with this band who were terrible. Like, they didn't need to get Tom Grennan back. <laughs> but for, So that was all happening. So everyone was like, what is going on? Everyone started, like, um, booting a massive football around, clanging people on the head. Of course. Everyone was dancing. Everyone was singing. It was like... Everyone was like making their own music. Everyone was in the, the tent and it was almost falling down because everyone was jumping around. Yeah. And this guy's like, <sighs> <laughs> spectators are reminded that the tented village is now closed. Can you stop taking off your clothes <laughs> and leave. <laughs> and then everyone I directed, I directed at you that one, was and it? Then, oh, yeah. 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 And then everyone started singing, throwing you the plant pots around. I'd, say, I'd love to if it got more and more specific as he went yeah. <laughs> Gentleman with the red hat, put the plant pot down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it it, it, it kind of got... Um, we are closing the toilets. <laughs> You won't be able to go to the toilet. You can feel him pressing the button. Manager's office, Mr. Skinner. <laughs> Mr. Skinner, <laughs> manager's, manager's office. office. <laughs> and I just, every, when we left, we could like hear his voice just like continuing on. Yeah. It's like, can everybody... He's just talking to himself. <laughs> please get off the 12th hole. I can see you. <laughs> Get out the bunker, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who did get a bit of coverage who I liked? Was the guy who jumped in the water when we won. Oh, yeah, the, that the was old guy, cool. yeah, yeah. Colonel Sanders. Honestly. Like, <laughs> he was seen from everywhere, though. Like yeah. We were on the grandstand to the left. Oh, it's so funny. Um, anyway, I think that's like 20 minutes of literally nonsense. Yeah. Right? Um, so you're I'll a take guesses on. I'll take guesses <laughs> on how long we've been this going. This might be a two-hour one. Whoa! Uh, how much is that? Yeah, it's, it's long. We're going to do guest play real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, but just a quick one. Do you think that um, this season is better than last season? I swing? think last season was better. Because yeah, they, they, the players they picked just killed it from. Mm. Interesting. I think that this year, the editing and the way they created the episodes was better because they got rid of the... And the cut is the what yeah, happens halfway they, through the seat, and I was they like, weren't child explaining. Yeah, it to I, us I this don't year. need that anymore. They got rid of that, but I agree with Pete. I think the guys they had last year was better. But then we were talking about this last time, and they didn't. We didn't think they showed it well enough. Yeah. So I'm a bit kind of like I think the footage they got in this was better. We got more of an insight, but the stories and the way things played out in the first season was better. You know what, Jacobs convinced me this season was better. No, there we go. Hmm. I, I agree. I think I think just was was last year. I think oh, should review it all again. Let's go again. Yeah. All right. So starting. So episode one, season one. <laughs> this one's called <laughs> "Golf Has Changed." And uh, right. Sorry, Mick. What was your uh, opinion? 
Um, I liked both equally. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I liked number one, uh, series one, because it kind of was fresh and new. And mm -hmm. I feel like they did a very good job of twisting it a little bit this year to get us a little more insight into how the players' lives work. Um, and then, of course, I loved watching Europe trounce the US at the Ryder Cup. So any any excuse to relive that, sure. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kieran? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll probably say that, the, uh, like you guys said, last season was better stories, but I think this year they did a better job of um, like the new, of like the behind the scenes stuff. So locker room stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I only just think that there could be angles in which they, each episode could have had better angles in terms of like, they could have flipped on the side of like, you know, maybe getting a bit more Europe stuff in there for the Ryder Cup, maybe putting a bit more live stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we only, we only saw a little bit of, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think it was like the first well, episode yeah, Dustin, or Yeah, Dustin yeah. really, that was it. Um, so just maybe a little bit more of that, but yeah, overall I thought it was a good, a good scene. He's just touched in that first episode again saying, yeah, man, I don't care. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care. And it kind of felt the producers were like, okay, good chat. Oh, cool. Cool. Great. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Episode. And you're Wee. not going to be in a full episode. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right, guess the player. Okay, oh, let's welcome go. Welcome to the 2024 Rough Cut Open, the game where your knowledge of golf history is more important than your ability to actually hit the ball. How the game works. At the end of each episode, I describe the life and career of a famous golfer. And after each clue, these accomplished professionals write down who they think it is. However many hints it takes them to get home is how many shots they took on that hole. So, if you get a par five after just four clues, you would finish that hole in one under par. Here are the current standings. Let's rejoin the action as the players tee off. You know what? If you're in the Discord and I put a message in that says I need someone to play guest to player, I expect at least 100 responses. <laughs> There's uh, over a thousand you. How many responses did you get? For this one, I had about three or four. <laughs> Granted, I did it very late. However, David is representing the Discord. Oh. David's technically in the Discord. He responded to the message. So you're playing against David today. Oh, God. That's not good. Wow. All right, let's go. It's a par five. Okay. Oh. Shots. Shots. Okay. Out. Shot number one. Uh, you've just had it explained. Good. Play along at home. Shot number one. His Ryder Cup record, just talking about Ryder Cup, his Ryder Cup record was eight, nine, and two. His Ryder Cup record was eight, nine, and two. So is this, is this the... American way of doing it where they have the wins, the losses, and the draw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just so I know. So he's had eight wins, nine losses, losses and two draws. That's the way I'm taking it. Uh, and that's correct? So, uh, so. I will not be reading the question again. Uh, yeah. But that is, yeah. that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. The last one is draws, ties. Does that make a huge difference, Kieran? Yes. <laughs> he's got it now. Hole in one. Long par five, this. Actually, it's going to be really like speed golf. Okay, love it. Shot number two. Get a name down, please. Come on now. Uh, We've gone on for far too long. Who's well, false that? Um, well, full swings. <laughs> Shot number two. This player played harmonica in the blues rock group. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. This is not a joke. <laughs> That's a change of face. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I told you these ones were better. <laughs> this player played harmonica in the blues rock group Jake Trout and the Flounders, which also included fellow golfers Larry Rinker and Peter Jacobson. This player played harmonica in the blues group Jack Trout and the Flounders, which also included fellow golfers Larry Rinker and Peter Jacobson. Shot number two. This is wild. What, what the hell? What the harmonica? What the hell has just happened? <laughs> Uh, He's what? got a Ryder Cup record, what? and he played in the Blues Rock Band. What are we talking about? Um, oh, that, that's that's throwing me for a loop. It's not Emmerich Stenton, is it? <laughs> 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 Maybe it is. <laughs> oh my god! Um, Jesus, jeez, Louise. Um, Come on, I need names. Kieran, have you gone one? Uh, yeah, yeah. You just folded, or did you write down a second name? Uh, I am. Um... Mm, I'm gonna keep with what I've got. Oh wow! Holy one. Um, Come on, Jacobo. Yeah, all right. I don't like the 
Pressure. Uh, rules official been out. Yeah. Pay supply. Yeah, pay supply. Uh, okay. Slow. Okay. Shot number three. <laughs> we'll sort out that last hole we just played last week. Then I'll I'll speed up. Okay. Someone's a bit bitter because they didn't play very well in that hole. <laughs> Can't leave your bad shots behind you, mate. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Wyndham Clark. One all the time. Shot number three. The segment of Interstate 44 passing through Springfield, Missouri, was designated a memorial highway in his honor. This segment, the segment of Interstate 44 passing through Springfield, Missouri, was designated a memorial highway in his honor. Do you reckon you've got it? Oh No. Okay, good. I don't like it when you're really confident. I'm keeping one. I'm keeping my name. I, I'm more confident than I'm in the right direction, but I don't, I don't think I've got an eagle. Um, yeah, it's like you're kind of like, I'm pretty sure the green's over there. And I've hit it all right. Yeah. Right, I've got you. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Everyone got a name? Yeah. Excellent. Shot number four. Mm, yeah, I think so. This is for your birdie. Okay. <clears throat> this player's first name is William. This player's first name is William. That means nothing in this game. Yeah, because it's not his name. Yeah. It tells you something about him. His name is William. You know a lot of things about Didn't him so far. Call him William anymore. I'm sure of that. Ah, <sighs> but is, uh, is it though? Is it? <clears throat> Shot number four, this player's first name is William. Well, Kieran's well. folding a... No, no, no I, I've, done, I've done my third. You've, you've hit a third shot. I've hit my third shot. Okay, yeah. good. That's... I'm just going to keep because I've, 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 no changed, I've changed it again. I've, I've hit four different clubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to I hear. I've hit two. Okay, shot number five. This is your tap in for par. Okay. Hard course this though. <laughs> this player won the 1999 US Open at Pinehurst number two with a 15 foot par putt on the final hole. This player won the 1999 US Open at Pinehurst number two with a 15 foot par putt on the final hole. And you'll notice that Pinehurst number two is mentioned because that's probably where you're off to in about an hour. Mm, uh, not quite, but soon. A bit further on. Yeah. A couple of days. <sighs> wow. This player won the 1999 US Open at Pinehurst number two with a 15 foot par putt on the final hole. Jeez. Really big clue, that. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah that, like, that should be like, yeah, that should if, be, if you know that, you that know that. Yeah, that, which is why it's the tap in for Paul. Um, Did he win more than one major? I'm just... Uh, Fancy another club or... <laughs> I mean, I'm going to have to. Yeah. Yeah, because um, this isn't right. Um, hmm. Oh, man, this is, this is, this you, whoa, you, you, <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, you. you. I told you this one was better. Oh, you, you. I told yeah. you this one was better. You I can't know. get the harmonica out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how random is that? I mean, it, it, I think that was deliberately put there. Yeah. That was like a cheeky little hidden water hazard that <laughs> shocked everybody. Ah, oh, damn, 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 mate, that's uh, that's a killer. That. that yeah, because if you know who won it, you got it right. If mm. you do, you can't remember, you don't guess. Ah, uh, I, I can picture I can picture some of the people who won there, but it's definitely not nineteen ninety nine. Definitely not the guy I'm thinking of. I'm, I'm just going to keep. I have no reason to change. It's a tricky game. I don't man. love it. Tricky I don't game. see this guy playing a harmonica, but maybe that doesn't mean anything. Do you see many golfers playing no, harmonica? No, that's true, yeah. If I, Apart yeah. from John Daly? No, oh, my God, it's John Daly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And we already had John Daly. If we hadn't had John Daly, that was going to be think, my I think we would have had John Daly. Okay, so um, if you haven't got it now, people at the table and also people on the internet... Uh, you're going to be over par for this hole. This is your bogey putt. Shot number six. In 2016, Canadian actor Brian Malcolm portrayed this golfer in the Canadian TV series May Day. And again in 2019 in Air Crash, in Air Crash Investigation Special Report. What? In 2016... <laughs> oh. In 2016... Canadian actor Brian Malcolm portrayed this golfer in the Canadian TV series May Day and again in 2019 in Air Crash S Investigation S Special so Report. Friggin' annoyed at myself there. I should have got this like four clue. Uh, well, clues I know. Ago. I know. I, I did, did I not tell you that I thought you were going to eagle this hole? 
In 2016, Canadian actor Brian Malcolm portrayed this golfer in the Canadian TV series Mayday, and again in 2019 in Air Crash Investigation Special Report. Peter Finch. I'm so, I'm so annoyed with myself. Yeah. I see. Oh, so sad. Come on, boys. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep it. Yeah. You're keeping it? Yeah. You're going to double the hole? Probably, but... Unless you've got this person. Uh, thing is, now... William. Now that he has reacted like that, I've yeah. probably got it now, William. I might as well just leave my... I might as well just leave my guess. Can a man change If I need stars? to beat him. <laughs> William! <laughs> Go on then. Will. Put just me follow out of your my feet. misery. Shot number seven. This is the worst you can do on the internet and or in the room. <laughs> in October, October 25th, 1999, today's player was killed in a crash of a Learjet flying from his home in Orlando, Florida to Texas for the year ending tournament, the Tour Championship. At the time of his death, this player had won over $12 million in career earnings. He won over $2 million during the 1999 season and finished seventh on the year's money list. Today's golfer is William Payne Stewart. Yeah, not a... Never even heard would of never have got it. What? 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 Payne Stewart? Never heard of him. I you have, know the guy with the big I... baggy pants? Yeah. The plus fours. Are you... Are you sh Sure that Stuart Sink's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I had, had Fred Couples. Uh, you have I, I, I like you could uh, you could you could oh. give me thousand guesses. I've never got it. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, let I me tell no you let me tell you why you should have got it. Oh, I know exactly why. First clue: his Ryder Cup record was tells you he's dead. Oh, he's not playing Ryder Cup. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Is I think you're looking into that a bit. No. Tells you he's dead. What kind of morbid minds do you think we've got going on over? Well, here? then when you go clue three, where he's got a memorial highway, but that tells you, you he's definitely dead. Yeah, but when you go, oh, he was born in thingy. I was like, oh, was okay, he's dead. <laughs> no, because that's not the same context. It doesn't mean the same thing. Um, <laughs> the William Payne Stewart thing I had heard before, but no. Yeah. The, and then if you know who won the U.S. Open in '99, you got it. The Memorial Highway thing just like literally completely passed me by. I just I just heard Highway, I think. <sighs> and then I should I definitely should have got the '99 U.S. Open because I, I knew he'd won at Pine Nest, but. Do you want to know some really <sighs> really s struggle? Wait, city how did stuff? David do? David was won over also. No. Oh. So did you win? You're yeah. welcome, guys. Yeah, half the hole. Oh, half, half the hole. What a, what a beat. Let turn out. That was a tough one. That I was in to win. Excellent work. This will be the longest episode of the Rough Cut Golf Podcast we've ever released. So if you are still here, You're welcome. <laughs> if you are still here, congratulations. You have joined an elite club of golfers and or golf listeners and you, you win a prize. You have won honor and glory you, you know what i really hope that you've reached your destination by this point <laughs> yeah. if you are if you are still in the car then i was so sorry it Look, must be an awful traffic tiredness out. kills so if you need to take a break that's true pull over to the side of the road now okay or if you're on the range go home <laughs> <laughs> you've hit it's enough not balls tonight <laughs> nah, you've you enough balls. you're not you're not going to do the top tracer record today right keep, keep going get another bucket <laughs> Keep, keep trying. Hot dog and a pint. That's what you need. Uh, ah! Right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. Thank oh. you, everyone, for uh, taking part and being a wonderful uh, array of people. As you'll notice, the uh, podcast has been slightly different today. We are currently going through a complete renovation of the studio space. Potentially, within the next month, you're going to be seeing a very different setup. If you've got any suggestions on what might be included, then please get into the comments below and let us know. Apart from that, thanks for listening on your favorite podcast provider or YouTube channel. You can subscribe to the Please make sure you do now. <laughs>